Cincinnati on a 105 degree day on the field. Welcome to College Football on ESPN, presented by Marathon. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. And two hours before kickoff, there were tempers flaring briefly on the field. Players had to be separated by the coaches. All good, though, between the head coaches, Tom Allen and Luke Fickle. And welcome to the booth now. Dave Pash with Dusty DeVore. Check Tom Lugan Bill on the field. For Indiana, this is one of the biggest games in recent memory that fans can actually watch. They beat Penn State and Michigan a year ago, but nobody was here. And they're playing a team that, yes, it's way too early to talk about college football playoff for a group of five team. But if they can beat Notre Dame in a couple weeks in Indiana today, they'll turn some heads. Look, Luke Fickle has built a bully in the American Conference. This is a legitimate top 10 team in college football. NFL talent on both sides of the ball, a very talented and deep defense, and a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate in Desmond Ritter. And they're taking on an Indiana team. Tom Allen has built a culture a magical season in 2020. They didn't like the way this year started with their performance against Iowa. A great opportunity to reinforce last year's magical run wasn't a fluke. It's the real deal here in Bloomington. And it is hot down on the field as we check in with the third member of our crew, Tom Luganville. You got it, guys. I'll tell you what, Desmond Ritter is the very definition of player development. It was just over two years ago that this was a player that was erratic, he was raw, he was athletic, and now all of a sudden, fast forward, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate and a legitimate one at that. He's poised, he checks all of the intangible factor boxes, and he's a great runner, but even better passer than people give him credit for. Expect to see the full gamut of the game plan, run and pass, out of this Cincinnati offense today, guys. And we will see Ritter here momentarily. Indiana won the toss and deferred, so Ritter and the Bearcat offense will take the field here shortly. Cincinnati started the year number eight in the rankings under fifth-year head coach Luke Fickle, moved up to number seven, but then dropped after Beating Murray State 42 to seven, but it took a while for Cincinnati to get going. Indiana, meanwhile, was ranked 17th preseason, but as Dusty mentioned, a loss at Iowa where Michael Penix, the Indiana quarterback, turned it over a bunch, and the Hoosiers were blown out. They've been waiting for this game and talking about it for the last couple of weeks. After beating the Nittany Lions and the Wolverines here last year, Indiana football was back on the map. But the fans couldn't experience it like they can today. Trey Tucker and Tyler Scott are deep for Cincinnati. And here is the speedster Tucker. And he gets absolutely hammered at the 18-yard line. How about Desmond Ritter? Let's take a deeper dive into what he's going to bring to the table. Athleticism, it's off the charts. You'll see him get around defenders when he's dropped back past a lot of design quarterback run. Arm strength, look for shots today. Really worked on it in the offseason. He's got plenty of arm strength to make all the throws, and he epitomizes competitive toughness. Makes those game-winning type plays, the type of plays that your offensive line becomes. You say, man, you've got some toughness. A lot on display here for Desmond Ritter. Got to work on his accuracy, but one of the best athletes at the position. Player of the year in the American in 2020. On first down, they're going to run it with Jerome Ford, and he spun down after a pickup of two by Ryder Anderson, a transfer from Ole Miss. Jerome Ford expect a heavy dose of this talented running back. Explosive speed, vision, great feet, and home run capability. Great start to the season for the junior running back with back-to-back 100-yard -back games. And some movement. Now, Indiana does move a lot on the defensive line to try to get the opponent to jump, and that's what the right tackle, Dylan O'Quinn, just did. Exactly right, partner. Anticipate Full and start. expect. Offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, second down. Indiana loves pre-snap to move the front, to stem the front, then post-snap slant. And Jerome Ford, as we already talked about, Micah McFadden, we were told yesterday by Tom Allen, he is the heartbeat of this defense. Guys all over the field making plays. 
He was a third team All-America. A year ago, McFadden led the Big Ten in sacks. So after the five-yard setback via penalty, it's second down and 12. Ritter to the air, and the pass is behind Michael Young, incomplete, so it'll be third down and 12. Dusty looking at Desmond Ritter right after he released that ball he knew it and he put both of his hands down pushed down towards the ground like all right settle down Desmond settle down now you're backed up you got the student section behind you this is what Cincinnati needs to weather here today. Indiana led the conference in sacks a year ago let's see if the Hoosiers come after. Desmond Ritter here on third down at 12. They will. Ritter to the sideline. It's caught, but well short of the line to gain. It was caught by Leonard Taylor, but it will be a three and out for Cincinnati. Perfect start to this game for the Indiana football team. Flying down on special teams, you can see and feel the energy that they have today. Quality catch tackle over on the sidelines for a quick three and out. There's Tom Allen, who liked Luke Fickle in his fifth year. National Coach of the Year last year, and the first to win Big Ten Coach of the Year at Indiana since Bill Mallory in the 80s. Here's the punt by Mason Fletcher. And it checks up around the 31-yard line. So a 42-yard punt, no return. Here comes junior quarterback two time captain Michael Penix made some magical plays in 2020 11 and 3 career as a starter they lost at Ohio State last year the only loss in conference play but he was brilliant in that game threw for almost 500 yards but the season ended via injury torn ACL third straight season that's ended because of an injury and he has not looked the same you wonder about his confidence is he worried about the leg after what happened at the end of last season especially with bodies around him Dave right stepping into throws worrying about bodies flying into his knee they've been working on his confidence here this early part of the season we'll see if that confidence has grown today three picks two return for touchdowns week one against Iowa they're going to run Stephen Carr here on first down and there's nowhere to go against that Cincinnati front my Jay Sanders was there for first for the Bearcats. This is a Cincinnati defense. It's got NFL talent at all three levels. My Jay Sanders, you're going to see his length, his twitchiness on display, as improved as a run defender, but an outstanding edge rusher. It's an aggressive attacking style defense for Cincinnati. Carr, the USC transfer, lost a yard on first down. Boy, Sanders in the backfield quickly. No flag down, and the pass way off the mark by Penix. Intended for Cameron Buckley. The Hoosier fans thought that Sanders was offside. Third down and 11. Watch Sanders come off the edge here. Looks like he might have gotten a little bit of a head start, but you see the quick hand swipe down on the tackle, Luke Hager. Hager. 21 is somebody they're going to have to identify and get blocked up, especially when they try to drop back and throw the football. So both teams off schedule on their first possession offensively. Third and 11. Pressure coming from Cincinnati. Penix from the pocket. Sidearms it incomplete. Trying to hit Buckley. Another transfer from Texas A&M. And both teams go three and out to start the game. You see a lot of pressure on third down. Bodies in front of Michael Penix. He steps into that throw, but low and outside of his intended target. Good stop there for Mike Tressel's defense, new defensive coordinator. Both teams with true freshman punters. This is James Evans. Never played football until he got to Indiana. Played squash and rugby in high school, but he's got pretty darn good leg. And it's down to around the 10 yard line. What a boot by the six foot one, 220 pound punter, 59 yards. Back to Bloomington in a moment, no score early on. ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon, driven forward. 2020 was a glorious year for Indiana football. 
with the wins against Penn State, Michigan, and then at Wisconsin. So that got them into the top 20 preseason in 2021 for the first time since 1969. They were ranked as high as number seven a year ago, but they lost week one against Iowa, bounced back against Idaho here in Bloomington week two. No score early on here against eighth-ranked Cincinnati. A high pass. Was that thrown behind the line? No, they're going to say incomplete. Intended for Michael Young. Definitely goes forward. You know, Desmond Ritter is such a rhythm quarterback, and especially early on in games. Mike Denbrock loves to call some easy throws, easy passes, get his confidence up, get him into a rhythm. We've seen a misfire on two early passes. The other aspect, when he runs the football, Denbrock told us when he gets hit, kind of wakes him up, and he's ready to play a little quarterback run game here in the near future on this drive. Only got two offers coming out of high school, Eastern Kentucky and Cincinnati by then offensive coordinator Zach Taylor, who's currently the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. And some movement. Second time we've seen an offensive lineman come up out of his stance too soon. That was John Williams, the left tackle. Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Second down. Let's say good afternoon now to Matt Berry in the studio. Guys, good afternoon. Happy College Football Saturday. Time now for your Rocket Mortgage Studio update. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, why is Virginia Tech, the 15th ranked team in the country, an underdog on the road at West Virginia? Well, Letty Brown gives him 81 yards of a reason why early in his Mountaineers, 7 0 over Virginia Tech. An old Big East rivalry game there between Tech and WVU. Cincinnati after another false start, second and 15. And Ritter going to keep it here. Gets knocked down after a gain of just a couple. Good stick by Cam Jones, senior linebacker from Memphis. It will be third and long. Extremely well played. This is a staple of Cincinnati's offense. Just that read zone, quarterback keep, and man, answers there for Indiana. Ryder Anderson all over the dive back on the inside zone. And Cam Jones had the quarterback. Outstanding job in the open field, wrapping up a very elusive Desmond Ritter. Communication continuing to be a problem down here, guys, behind this offense in the back end zone. It is loud. Ritter to the air. And it's pulled in short of the line to gain. Tyler Scott wrapped up by Jalen Williams. That was a terrific play by Williams, who was banged up week one against Iowa. Really good corner, second team all Big Ten last year. Good strong throw from Ritter. Tyler Scott doesn't push that route up to the sticks, just short, and has to come back to the football. And as you mentioned, partner, outstanding job by Jalen Williams getting Scott on the ground and forcing the punt. Another outstanding job by Charlton Warren, defensive coordinator, his defense. They've come to play. Another Australian punter, Mason Fletcher, 6-7, on to boot it for the second time. Reese Taylor is the deep man for the Hoosiers. The line drive takes a couple of Bearcat bounces inside the 30-yard line. I'm going to call this one of the best matchups you'll see in all of college football this weekend. Ty Freifogel, the best playmaker for this Indiana offense, an NFL caliber receiver against one of the top and premier cover corners in all of college football, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Going to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Both these guys spend the time a lot in the boundary. We're going to see good on good when Freifogel and Ahmad Gardner are matched up. See if Indiana goes with some dink and dunk, easy confidence level throws here for Michael Penix. He's got to get some confidence here. Got Stephen Carr behind him out of the pistol here on first down, just outside the 25 yard line. Give the Carr with some room up the middle across the 30 to the 32. Stephen Carr had over 100 yards last week, his first 100 yard game since his freshman year at USC in 2017. They have a bunch of transfers on this Indiana team, but when talking with Tom Allen, he said, look, we didn't want to bring anybody in who could disrupt the culture, so all of the transfers that we accepted had relationships previously with coaches on our staff. Thought that was really interesting. Very selective who he's going to let come in, and in no way is he going to allow someone to disrupt what he's built here. 
A pitch to David Ellis here, trying to get tracked down, able to elude one tackler, run out of bounds in front of the Cincinnati bench. And a good job by Deshaun Pace to not yank him down once they got out of play because that would have been another penalty. It's a two yard loss as it is. And how many times do you see a play like that the defender give that extra tug down and you see the flag smart smart play on the far sidelines. I'm expecting some pressure here. Look this defense is all about pressure. We've seen Michael Penix losing confidence especially when pressure is right in his lap. Tressel dials it up here. Mike Tressel, first year D coordinator, spent the last 14 years at Michigan State, was with Cincinnati prior to that under Mark D'Antonio. And here they come on third down and six, single coverage downfield. Penix overthrows Fry Fogle. There's that matchup you were talking about. Ahmad Gardner in coverage. That's the matchup to pass high and unable for Fry Fogle to make a play. But as you see, Ahmad Gardner loves to be a physical corner in the boundary, hands on that wide receiver. Fry is going to have to win throughout the course of the day to help his quarterback Michael Penix. Well done by one of the premier quarterbacks in all of college football, Sauce Gardner. So Penix one for four, and that one completion was on that pitch on the end around. Looks like we might have a fake here as they shift. Instead, they just snap it way to the left. Don't see that very often. Here's Montgomery picked up and dropped at the 35-yard line. 38-yard punt. Only a one yard return. The fans are back in Bloomington, hoping their team can knock off the eighth ranked team in the land. Luke Fickle took over the Cincinnati program in 2017. They went four and eight that year, but since they've been one of the best teams in all of college football, 33 and six in their last 39 games. They almost beat Georgia in the bowl game last year. Excellent defensive team under Coach Fickle, two time American coach of the year, and they've been ranked in the AP poll for more than half that time, most among group of five programs, and they're going to be a group of five team perhaps just a couple more years and then off to the Big 12 along with BYU Houston and UCF huge win for all those programs and Luke Fickle is a big reason Cincinnati's in position to move on to a power five conference going to give more of a direct uh, route to the college football playoff so many great things about Cincinnati and those squads moving to the Big 12 Jerome Ford on first down runs out of room as he's pushed out of bounds no gain on the play and with the move and the success comes opportunities and there was obviously the firing of Clay Helton at USC this week and Luke Fickle was asked about it as was seemingly every other coach in America and we asked Luke yesterday have you addressed it with the team he said no but the guys are kind of making fun of me joking around about it but I what he said I would wish all coaches would say he just said this is good for our program any notoriety is good for our team it's good for me without denying it leverage said it's a great reflection of these players and the program that we've built here no question. Mike Bone, the AD at USC, hired Fickle at Cincinnati. With that said, you and I both feel like Luke is not going to go to SC, but who knows even if he's a candidate. That's a thing. Ritter taking a shot here, single coverage downfield, and it's just over the head of the intended target, Alec Pierce, with Reese Taylor in coverage. Well, this is what they've been working on, the deep shot, and Alec Pierce has great size and body control down the field. Outstanding job by Reese Taylor inside position running stride for stride with Alan Pierce really quality coverage and what's turning into an early defensive throwdown. That's one thing the Cincinnati coach coaches told us yesterday Raiders got to improve his accuracy down the field for us to be a championship team. Indiana rushes six. Ritter off his back foot, tipped, and intercepted at midfield. Taiwan Mullen in coverage, and then it's McCrary Ball getting the redirection and the INT. Well, we've been talking about this pressure that they create here. Watch here, and then the looper, McFadden, gets the hit on Ritter as he delivers the pass. Comes clean inside that pass just outside the outstretched arm of Leonard Taylor. Tip drill. 
And Indiana is right there for a big pick. And I've been telling you guys about Marcelo, Marcelino, McCray, Ball, popped on me on the film. Twitchy got another opportunity after a catastrophic injury before the year last year. The sixth year senior wanted to make a presence in this game and a big early takeaway for the Hoosiers defense. Second interception thrown by Ritter this year. Coming off our commentary about needing better accuracy. Run play on first down big hole for Stephen Carr gain of six. Here's Matt. Guys AT&T 5G studio update in West Virginia. Boy they feel good right now. Jarrett Daggy, Bryce Ford Wheaton. You blink in the first quarter. 14 nothing Mountaineers over Virginia Tech. Meanwhile no offense here Matt. No score. Nearing the midway point of the opening frame here in Bloomington. Carr hit in the backfield, then pitches it on a reverse. Here's DJ Matthews getting the first down before he's taken out of play at the 30 yard line, a gain of 14. Well, they've been trying to find ways to get DJ Matthews the ball in space. The Florida straight trans transfer is just outstanding. A well designed play there by offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan. Looked like that play was dead in the water. Stephen Carr, as he's getting hit, gets the pitch off, and you see the elusiveness and speed on the edge from D.J. Matthews. Opted out last year, did not play. Transfer from Florida State. The deepest anybody's gotten here in the first quarter into opponent territory from the 30 of Cincinnati. Here's Carr off the right side. Squeaks through a hole. And down near the line to gain. Come up a couple of yards short. Ty Van Bossen on the stop. That's a good sign for this Indiana football team. Good movement. Just a zone play to the right. 72 Dylan Powell was able to get his man cut off. And good movement as you saw that that hole just open up. And Stephen Carr a patient back. Really nice job on first down. Picks up eight, so second and two from the 23 of Cincinnati. Penix off play action, has time. Everybody covered. Penix takes off, throws it to the sideline where it's knocked down. Kobe Bryant batted it away from Cameron Buckley. It'll be third down. I think you wanted to go to Freifogel once again. It's going to be in the boundary. Ahmad Gardner, no one's open down the field. See Michael Penix get outside the pocket and really good coverage across the board. You got to make sure they're careful with the football here, Dusty. The way this game's being played, it's all about defense. Your points are going to come at a premium. Be very careful here if you're Michael Penix in the red area. I agree. You had a really good kicker, so you want to give Charles Campbell. A shot here if you can't pick up the first down. But they do get the first down with Tim Baldwin Jr. Down to the 16. Boy, you don't see that often, right? Cincinnati, third and short with that excellent run defense, get pushed back like that. Well, they had Adam Bjorsen in, who's a quality run blocker. And you're exactly right, Dave. Once again, good push. It's an early good sign for this Indiana rushing attack. Cincinnati is stout up front. And now, multiple times on this drive, the Indiana offensive line. Getting that push, imposing their will, and open up some nice creases for Hoosier ball carriers. They're going to keep both those tight ends in the game. Play action here. Penix going to dump it off to one of those tight ends. It's Hendershot inside the 10. It's a first down, fighting for the end zone. And he's in for the Indiana touchdown. Looks like he's into me, partner. Great balance on the sidelines, fighting through three Bearcat defenders, keeps his foot in, stretches the ball out. That's good for six. And even on that short pass by Penix, that has to help the confidence, right? He's so much better and more relaxed on the move. Love the play call by Nick Sheridan. Little boot action, easy throw. Good on Hendershot. Being outstanding with the ball after the catch. Hendershot, third team All Big Ten last year. 
He's a big target at 6'5, 260. Extra point is good. And Indiana, after the turnover, takes a 7 0 lead. Cashing in that turnover for points. When you run the ball, it sets up play action, sets up boots, and a touchdown here early for the Hoosiers. Nick Sheridan, one of the bright young minds in college football, only 33 years old, in his second year as the offensive coordinator, was a player at Michigan, played quarterback, and he got Michael Penix out in space after establishing a run on that last drive. He was impressive talking with yesterday. He had a good game plan, felt comfortable and good about the week of practice leading into this ball game. How about the reverse big play there, getting DJ Matthews in space and being able to run the football sets up the play action. Well done on that drive by the offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan. They've already run for close to 40 yards in the first half of this opening quarter. This will be a touchback, so let's check in with Matt Berry. All right, guys, some top 10 highlights to catch you up on Texas A&M. Demon Demas, he hasn't caught a ball Calzana. in his college career. This is first reception, wide open for the touchdown. Texas A&M up 14-0. Also, Big Ten, Michigan, and NIU. Blake Corum punches it in from two yards out. Michigan up 14-3 into the first. Where are you on A&M after nearly losing to Colorado last week and no Haynes King? That defense is going to keep them in a lot of ball games, and I think that the running game with the embarrassment of riches they have at running back is going to be fine, but clearly the quarterback position has to get cleaned up. Boy, we see it again. Indiana moving pre-snap on that defensive line, and it's the third false start. Luke Fickle can't start. believe it. Offense, number 56, five-yard penalty, first down. By three different guys, that was the center, Jake Renfro. As we look at our menu today, coming up 3.30, you got Clemson, Florida State, embarrassing defeat last week. We'll see if the Seminoles can bounce back. ESPN Prime and ABC Prime, some good games. And Arizona State, BYU, maybe one of the best, certainly one of the best, maybe the best game on the docket today. Can't wait for that wideout tonight. That'll be at Penn State. Here's Ritter over the middle, and a big hit after the catch by Young. Cam Jones with the stick. But good job to hang on to the football. Pick up of about five. Easy slant to Michael Young. Big hit there. Cam Jones low in the boom. And it's legal. Well done by him. And how about Michael Young completing that catch after taking the big hit? Good concentration by the senior wide receiver. You know, for some of the inaccuracies we've had from Desmond Ritter, that was actually where that ball could only be placed in order to be caught. They get a chunk back, Tom, after that penalty. Get it to second and reasonable. Play fake here. Ritter again throws off his back foot and throws it out of bounds. So it'll be third down and eight. There's some miscommunication there. Jordan Jones did not run the route that Desmond Ritter was expecting, and good pressure off the edge by Bo Robbins. Nowhere for Desmond Ritter to go with that football. And another third and long. And this crowd, man, it is at a fever pitch right now. Largest crowd for a non conference game in well over 30 years here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Ritter, pocket breaking down. Ritter taking off, flips it downfield, incomplete. Fourth down. Well, these third downs, Charlton Warren is just dialing it up. You see Cam Jones again, blitz inside the looper. McFadden gets picked up by the running back, but a lot of confusion, it seems, right now from Desmond Ritter and what he's seeing, Tom. Yeah, and just watching Desmond Ritter down here talking with offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, he's very frustrated. It's kind of coming out in some of his body language. They're having a difficult time managing snap count to silent count, mirroring it with crowd noise, and they just have got to get it straightened out. It was an ugly first half for Cincinnati last week against Murray State. They figured it out in the second half. Obviously a better opponent today. Matthews waiting for it and a fair catch made at the 32. And time now for Affleck trivia question. Affleck. When was the last time Indiana won the Big Ten? Here's a hint. It resulted in the only Rose Bowl appearance in program history. Another hit. Dusty, you weren't born. 
were any of us alive? I don't think so. There are a couple guys in the booth here that are raising their hands, but we're not. Dave probably not was. Let's say, are you going to raise your hand there, Dave? No, yeah, Dave. I don't think so, man. Going to divulge <laughs> at age years? Well, if you look at the shot right now of the three of us, You're looking good. The man. two of you look the same <laughs> in 2021. <laughs> Thanks to the ESPN archive team for putting that shot in there. First down for Indiana on the 32 yard line. And Penix going to throw it here on first down over the middle behind the intended target and nearly intercepted. He was going for DJ Matthews. Another errant throw by Penix. You know Dusty you mentioned that last drive where it starts with the run the stretch outside zone and then you come off of that you got motion coming across the formation then you have the bootleg and the naked stuff getting the quarterback out of the pocket. That's the recipe for Indiana. I don't know if throws between the hashes between the numbers is the strength of this quarterback right now. Arquan Bush nearly got another interception already picked off a pass. Earlier this season pressure off the edge Penix gets it away on the screen to Carr. Carr trying to find a running lane. He gets twirled to the turf at the 41. Eight of nine. Darian Beavers on the stop. It'll be third and one. Love this play call from Nick Sheridan. Anticipating an aggressive call there from Cincinnati. Sets up the screen. Michael Penix invited the rush to him. Easy dunk down and a nice pickup on second long. The Bearcats stack in the box. Penix keeping it here. Smart decision. Gets the first down out to the 44. Well, this is such a good decision by Michael Penix. Read zone and watch off the edge. Cook is going to fly down. Penix is going to read that and an easy keep for him as he dives forward for the first down. Well done by the senior quarterback. He told us yesterday, look, yeah, I'm coming off an ACL, but if I got to run it, I'm going to stick it in there. I'm not going to be afraid. And we saw that there. He's had two torn ACL, three seasons ended because of injury. On first down, he'll hand it off to Carr straight ahead. He gets dropped after a pickup of a couple by pace. Dusty don't you think we need to see a little bit more of that run from Michael Penix just in the sense that Cincinnati loves to play man defense and it's tough to play man and account for quarterback run. No question this has to be an element of this game today for Michael Penix and I just love the fact that he keeps it there. It's going to give this Cincinnati defense something to think about for the remainder of this football game. Oh yeah this guy can and will keep it and is a very effective runner. Tim Baldwin in the game almost as many carries this season as he had all of last year just 22 totes a year ago and they hand it to him here a flag down nice move by Baldwin getting the first down after he shook a defender. Gain of 10. Well, let's see what the penalty is about. Already seen three penalties on Cincinnati for false starts none yet on Indiana. Will this be the Hoosiers first. Nope. Offside. Defense number 21 lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty's declined. Result of the play, first down. So undisciplined football so far in the first quarter by Cincinnati. This season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Dave Pash, Dusty DeVore, check Tom Luganville in Bloomington. Look at the rushing so far. Indiana dominating on the ground. Really nice run there by Tim Baldwin. The vision, the jump cut, a little bit something extra for him. Play action, Penix backing up, hesitates, throws incomplete. Hayden Hendershot, the intended receiver, second down. Collision there between Hendershot and Brian Cook. And Cook's looking like he's calling for a flag. Looks like incidental contact. They kind of ran into each other. I thought that was a smart play by Michael Penix. Pressured off the edge. His intended target had fallen down and gets rid of the football without making a negative play. Yeah, a week ago, Dusty, he took a sack in yeah. the same regard and didn't have to. So no negative yardage. See the numbers three of nine for Penix so far. Did have a touchdown pass. Catch and run by Hendershot. Second time they've been in Cincinnati territory. Penix on the roll up and over the middle wide open is Miles Marshall and he's got a first down to the 32 yard line. You guys said it. He's at his best when he's on the move. 11 yard gain. Love Nick Sheridan moving this pocket. And how about the route? 
Watch 13 just come in and sit down right here in the soft part of this zone. Rolls all the way to the left. The Cincinnati defense goes with the flood motion. And Miles Marshall wide open as he sits down. Good job by Michael Penix identifying the open receiver keeping this drive rolling. This is a guy, and we touched on at the top of the show, that threw for 500 yards in Columbus last year as they run it here to Carr, and not much pushback by Pace and Briggs. But Penix has had some iconic moments for Indiana. The stretch out to beat Penn State last year. The five touchdown game at the shoot. They lost the game, yes, but he led them to one of their best seasons ever at Indiana. Now he's just got to regain some of that magic which comes with more confidence that confidence feels like it's growing and growing by each possession here today Tom well it does and I think the more he makes some instinctive plays the more he's going to forget about any negatives and just let it flow and second and nine here after the one yard pickup by Carr and Carr again tackled at the twenty five. So even though they got the one yard on first down, they come back with a good run on second down to put them in third and three. That's a play that Joel DeBlanco typically makes. Unblock, gets in the backfield. That's kind of that patience that I talked about with Stephen Carr. Doesn't get in too big of a hurry, tough to tackle, and takes what would have been a no gain into a positive gain. And more importantly, now you're in third management. Just outside the 25 of Cincinnati. Third and three. They're going to run it here. It's Carr getting the first down. Briggs on the takedown, but that's a gain of six on third and three. I mean, now we've seen multiple third and short situations that Indiana trusting this offensive line against the stout Bearcat front, getting push, getting movement, and continuing to churn out first downs really well done on the left side of that offensive line for the Indiana Hoosiers Luke Hager Mike Kadick really nice job opening up and paving that hole 11th play of the drive here for the Hoosiers they're going to run it again with Baldwin able to break a tackle and drag defenders with them to the 12 yard line Look at Tom Allen all fired up about the run game right now. That guy is so passionate, loves football, and his team reflects it. Just sitting there talking with him yesterday, everybody's heard the stories. We've seen the videos, the LEO. He had the hair on my <laughs> arm standing up by the second question. How can you not love this guy? Look, Look at that, man. That He's is, fired up. That's so good. And you said it. The players have taken on his personality. They have bought in big time. And Indiana with a very impressive start to this game. Blowing Cincinnati off the ball. The Hoosiers in that first quarter run for 75 yards against that Cincinnati D and they lead 7-0 in Bloomington. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Marathon. Well over 100 degrees on the field here in Bloomington on a mid-September Saturday. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. The Indiana Hoosiers on pace for 300 rushing yards against that Cincinnati defense. They're in second and two on the Bearcat 11 as we start the quarter. And this time Cincinnati does a good job off the ball. Carr is tackled immediately by DeBlanco. It's third down. DeBlanco knifes in there underneath. The center's block, nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but still with the positive yardage on first down, Indiana in prime situation here on third and very manageable. Here's Carr on third and three, trying to dive for it. He comes up short. What do you do? Fourth and one? You taking the points? Or you going? We talked yesterday with Tom Allen about these calls. He's got a call sheet, and they're going for it. Up on the football quick. And quarterback sneak panic, second effort. Don't think he got it. Cincinnati was better at the point of attack. He was stuffed initially, fought hard, kept the feet moving to try to get it with the second effort, but he's short. I almost felt like they rushed that. I know they wanted to try to catch Cincinnati off guard. They did, Dusty. You're right. I don't. Michael Penix. It didn't even look like he got a clean exchange 
from the center and a good job of penetration. That Bearcat front goes low. Penix doesn't receive the snap clean. Nowhere to go. And a massive stop for Cincinnati. Mike Tressel, new defensive coordinator, fired up. Here's my thing, guys. This is a game, and we've talked about this, that probably isn't going to have a ton of scoring. So why not, in that situation early in the game, get it to 10-0? I agree, Dave. I agree with you, Dusty. I don't know how you feel about that, but the way that was so forced and rushed right there, uh, it, you know, points are going to come at a premium. This is a defensive football game. I'm with you. Look, I'm more of a conservative type of guy. I would have taken the points, but Tom Allen had his mind made up as soon as that ball went down. Like, to me, they ran the football knowing we're going for it on fourth down. He wanted to make a statement with that drive, and in the end, it backfires. Cincinnati with a big opportunity, a big stop. Cincinnati will run it as Ford drives forward for about three or four yards to the 14 yard line and you wonder will this get Cincinnati going they needed something to get them fired up and maybe that play did because offensively I mean no first downs a turnover they've had the ball for less than five minutes it's Hoosiers defense sideline warning on the Cincinnati bench this is their first of the game there's no yardage with that penalty the Hoosiers defense has completely negated the Cincinnati rushing attack winning the line of scrimmage dialing up a lot of pressure and they've got Desmond Ritter shaking a little bit. We'll see if he can recover. And Ritter going to keep it here trying to get the edge and scoots out of play after he gets the first down at the 21. First time without a first down in the first four drives of a game since Luke Fickle took over in 2017. I like that right there. You know, get Desmond Ritter on the perimeter. Outstanding block by Leonard Taylor, the tight end, getting out in front. Going to go with two tight ends here. They love Josh Wiley. Ritter from the pocket, and a diving catch is made by Trey Tucker. Let's check in with Matt Berry in the studio. All right, guys, for the Big Ten audience, Michigan, as expected, no drama with Northern Illinois. That's Hassan Haskins over the top, 21-3 Wolverines. After what you guys saw Oregon do to Ohio State, who's the favorite in the Big Ten? I think it's still Ohio State to this point. That's a good Oregon football team. But I'll tell you what, it feels more open now than it did before the season started. On second and six, four, oh, he gets pasted. Driven back by Cam Jones and slammed for a loss. Wow, Cam Jones popping the pads today. Watch him just come right up the gut. Unblocked, boom, big hit on Jerome Ford, a powerful running back. We've seen several times today Cam Jones absolutely laying the wood. Very impressive. He also ran into his six foot nine inch guard Lawrence Metz who's in there for Vincent McConnell the normal starter who's out due to illness. All kinds of issues up front for Cincinnati right now trying to keep the drive going after the turnover on downs Ritter in trouble escapes now throws incomplete fourth down he was going for Leonard Taylor good D by Raheem Lane. Well, it starts with the pressure. How about Ryder Anderson off the edge? And then it's McFadden again having a presence and pressure inside. Ritter off balance and excellent coverage down the field by Raheem Lane getting that left hand in for a pass breakup. Ferocious defense out of the Hoosiers to start this ballgame. So Cincinnati gets a first down but then has to punt. So Indiana will get it right back with D.J. Matthews, the deep man. Mason Fletcher, the true freshman punter, has been busy here early on. And the fair catch made at the 33 by D.J. Matthews. 7 0 Hoosiers. Welcome back to Bloomington, where Indiana leads Cincinnati 7 0. Answer the Affleck trivia question. The last time Indiana won the Big Ten, also, the one time they played in the Rose Bowl, neither of us were born. None of us were born on this team. 1967. And Taiwan Mullen, when he was being recruited out of Fort Lauderdale by Tom Allen, wrote this down and signed it. 50 years since we won a Big Ten title, 26 years since we won 
a bowl game in 10 years since we had a winning season. He signed his name to it and he said, we'll do. We're going to take care of all that. Now, they still haven't won a bowl game. They had back to back winning seasons. They haven't had three in a row since the 40s as they run Stephen Carr here between the tackles for about four or five yards. Taiwan Mullen, who a very impressive young man. We met with him yesterday. His brother Trayvon plays for the Las Vegas Raiders, and his first cousin is Lamar Jackson, who played against the Raiders on Monday Night Football. Talent rich football family. Bet that was some pretty good games of some street football, as he was telling us about what I loved. He wanted to come to Indiana to change this program. Flag down, free play, Penix downfield, and it is almost intercepted by Kobe Bryant, but again, because of the penalty. Would not have counted. Jabari Taylor looked to be the man that was guilty. Offside. Defense number 90. Five yard penalty. Second down. So basically, with what we're saying with Taiwan Mullen, he is kind of a snapshot of. The entire roster and, and the type of players that Tom Allen has brought in to build this program at, back up to where it was under Bill Mallory and maybe even go beyond and get to that Rose Bowl. They were close to playing in the Big Ten title game a year ago. Already lost a game to Iowa week one second and one they're just going to pound it and they get the first down as we check in with Matt Berry back in the studio. Guys, Miami kind of a sleepwalk early against Michigan State. Then the Oklahoma transfer, Charleston Rambo, takes over. Five receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown on this drive alone. Miami takes the lead 7-3 in the second. All right, Matt, here it is 7-0 Indiana. It feels like it's worse, although they did go for it and did not get it. Inside the 15-yard line of Cincinnati on the last possession. Bearcats have barely had the ball here in the first half. Penix dropping back, looking downfield, got a man, and it's caught inside the 30 by D.J. Matthews. Well, they acknowledged to us they wanted to start getting D.J. Matthews involved. Nice job on the route as he beats the coverage of the safety Hicks, and a dime delivered by Michael Penix, his best throw down the field of the afternoon, Dave. Gain of 27 on the play. They come back and run Carr, and he gets planted. Curtis Brooks. One of those super seniors up front for Cincinnati making a play there. Much needed play up front by the Bearcats. DJ. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, it does. It might have been the best throw Michael Penix has made all season long. And just after the give right there, you saw Michael Penix look to the sideline, pointed himself, knowing he should have kept on the read right there. Second down and 11. Third time the Hoosiers have been inside the Cincinnati 30. They go out of an empty set here. Bring Ellis in motion, and then it's a shovel pass to Hendershot that Cincinnati is all over. Van Boston on the stop. It's third and long as you look at the games coming up later today, including Auburn Penn State tonight on ABC. Bo Nix. I will be intrigued to see what he does on the road at hostile environment. Darian Beaver's very important player. The Cincinnati defense is shaken up. So we're going to step aside for a moment. Big third down for Indiana. Up 7-0 when we come back. Kick off your week two NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. All access with Jameis Winston, Randy Moss talking about all the best college football catches from today and a whole lot more. They passed Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville here in Bloomington. A big third down for the Cincinnati defense. Ty Freifogel up top. He's not been targeted many times today. Thought coming into this game he would be a major point of emphasis to get him the ball. Big third down. Penix to the air. Pressure coming. Gets the pass away. 
and what a catch as Matthews loses his lid. He gets drilled by two safeties. Hicks and Cook yet hangs on to the ball to move the chains. How about Michael Penix under duress, falling away, and delivers a dive. Strong hands and concentration to complete that catch by DJ Matthews. Been such a big piece of this first half for Indiana. And Penix took a shot there as well. And he's feeling it, you can tell. They go empty here. Some confusion by uh, Indiana offensively. They're getting the plate uh, clock reset here, Dave. I think it's what Penix was hoping for, and I think the official's going to give it to him. That play that we saw from Michael Penix, we saw all last year. He didn't make that in the first two games. No. no. He, his, you know, I think it goes back. We did not reset the play clock when the player's helmet came off. We'll reset it to 25 seconds. And Matthews has to lead the game for one play, by the way, because of that. Go ahead. Back to that first scoring drive when we saw him get outside the pocket, make an easy throw. His confidence, it's through the roof right now. Penix dumps it off to Hendershot inside the 10 and to the eight yard line for a gain of five. Well, we've seen now twice Hendershot very good tied in with the football in his hands. Easy throw an outstanding job after the catch getting up the field and getting five yards. See if they target Fry Fogel down here. And they keep it on the ground and run it. And they will with Carr. And he's brought down after maybe a half yard pickup by Deshaun Pace. So here we are again, third and short. We've seen this a ton here in Indiana. He usually has won that battle this afternoon. Well, they've trusted the guys up front. We've seen a lot of runs in this third, medium, third and short category. Had a great matchup down at the bottom of the screen. See if they do target. Yeah, a timeout called here by Cincinnati. Want to talk things over defensively midway through the second quarter. It's still 7 0 IU. Barry with a studio update. Michigan continues to pile it on. Hassan Haskins, another touchdown, ball over the goal line. Now 28 3 midway through the second. Some other scores we're keeping an eye on. How about Western Michigan? Beating Pittsburgh 20 to 7 in the second quarter. Guys? We had Pitt last week, Matt, and Tennessee played an excellent game against them, but definitely a surprise in that score right there. Here it's 7 0 and a critical third down with that Cincinnati defense again. Penix with time, throws end zone, and a one handed interception. What a great play by Brian Cook. So that's twice now consecutive possessions. Indiana's inside the 15 and comes up with nothing. Now there is a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. But if you lose this game and you're Indiana, you're going to be kicking yourselves about the last After two the possessions. Over on sportsmanlike conduct, intercepting team number six. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the 20 to the 10. It'll be first down Cincinnati. Well, Brian Cook's the one that's going to get caught for the unsportsmanlike. Michael Penix has to put this ball outside where only his tight end can make a play. Put it outside. Hendershot had a step on Brian Cook, throws it behind him, and a very athletic, big time interception from Brian Cook. I think his arm got hit as he threw the ball. I don't know if you guys can run that back again, but. There was contact right as he threw the ball. I'll, I'll say this though, Dave, and I was standing right behind the throw, looking him dead in the eyes. He threw the ball without even looking. And I think that's where the problem was with the accuracy to your point, Dusty. If he places the ball low to the outside, he might have a touchdown. Yep. But he didn't even look at it. So Cincinnati's offense back on the field. Been very ineffective so far, so a short throw here by Ritter to Alec Pierce, and that will get them about six yards to the 16-yard line. 
Desmond Ritter has been held in check so far here today. Give a lot of credit to this front of Indiana. They've created confusion, disruption along that Cincinnati offensive line without Vincent McConnell. Lawrence Metz is in. Some young players at tackle. And it's been problematic for this offense in the first half. Only 55 yards of offense. Ritter, and that one off target. It'll be third down. He was going for Tyler Scott. And you just saw that graphic a moment ago that half of their plays have gone for either negative yardage or zero yards. It's crazy. You know, we saw a little bit of this last week in the first half against Murray State, but then Cincinnati, Desmond Ritter really worked through that. Had a great second half. Big third down here, backed up. I'm leaving a quarterback run on the perimeter open here for Desmond Ritter. Doesn't like what he sees, checking at the line. Fadden here, 47. Great rusher. Ritter lobs it, and Pierce with the catch. Excellent throw. And Pierce has knocked out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line, and a late flag is thrown. And Tom Allen is lighting into one of his coaches, so it may have been a sideline infraction. Tom Allen was letting one of his assistants have it. Sideline warning, Indiana bench. That's their first warning of the game. There's no yards with that penalty. That's why he was yelling at a member of his staff for jumping out of the field there. Well, that's a veteran move by Desmond Ritter. Saw the look that he got, zone coverage. He checked into that and a big time conversion on third down. Ritter's gonna throw it again, long toss, and it's pulled in by Tyler Scott, not much with Taiwan Mullen, All-America in 2020 on the stop. Midway point of the second quarter, one of the biggest games at Memorial Stadium in recent memory that fans have actually witnessed. The wins last year with nobody in attendance against Penn State and Michigan, but number eight Cincinnati coming to town, They've got Notre Dame in a couple weeks as that front for Indiana moves and Cincinnati's offensive line moves with them. It, and it's the backup right guard, Lawrence Metz. That movement. False start. Offense number 56. Five yard penalty. Second down. That pre-snap movement really triggering the Cincinnati offensive line. They get lined up initially, as you see Luke Fickle frustrated, fourth now procedure penalty by his offensive line. They get a move call, and as they move, too reactionary by the Cincinnati front. So five pre-snap penalties on Cincinnati, four false starts, Ritter to the air, pressure backside, the ball is out, he gets sacked. And then the offensive lineman tried to pick it up with one hand. McFadden scoops it up for the Hoosiers. It'll be Indiana ball inside the 10. Ryder Anderson with the force fumble. Well, Ryder Anderson was such a key get from Ole Miss. One of the transfers they came in who bought in day one has already become a leader of this football team, and he's working on a redshirt freshman, making only his third start. And this is a highly experienced guy. You see the hands, the rip gets up, doesn't just get the sack, gets the ball out with the big hit on Desmond Ritter, and then a mistake also by the redshirt freshman. John Williams, you jump on that ball. No you don't pick it up with one hand. You get on the football, and it's the heartbeat of the defense. Micah McFadden knocking it loose, picking it up, and the Hoosiers in prime time field position. The wow. bottom line, Cincinnati's been an absolute mess here in the first half, but they got another chance still here on quick change to come up with a stop. They're only down 7-0. Indiana's had trouble down here twice already, come away with no points. So reminiscent of a week ago versus Murray State. The only difference is you're on the road and Indiana's not Murray State. And you gotta wonder, guys, for, for Cincinnati, obviously that defensive line for Indiana's been a problem, but what about the crowd? They haven't played in this environment in a couple years. And this crowd is everything and some. It was built to be. The first and goal for Indiana. Here's Carr up the middle, stuffed. Darian Beavers is back on the field after leaving earlier with the hit. Darian Beavers is an imposing force on the field. 6'4", 255. You see his presence there in the middle of that Bearcats defense. It looks like Zaven Collins. Yeah. Dave, I know you know, and Dusty and I saw last year from Tulsa. Just yep. a big monster defender. First round pick out of 
Tulsa by the Cardinals second and goal. And Penix on the rollout. Holding onto the ball now throwing it and he's got car for the touchdown. Nice bounce back by Penix after the interception last time down here. Second takeaway for this Hoosiers defense. Second time the offense has cashed in for six. Campbell on to make it 14 nothing Indiana. And some movement. We're going to find out what Cincinnati's made of. Over the next 35 minutes, if they're really a top 10 team, we're going to know here soon. And Dave and Dusty, when we talked to Luke Fickle about this exact same scenario last week, did you go in and lay into the football team? He said, no, he really didn't have to. So the players took care of it. Now we're going to find out. False start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. We'll replay the try. You're, Caleb Jones. You're exactly right, Tom. He said that it started with Desmond Ritter, then the other leaders really stepped up and voiced their displeasure with the way that they played in that first half, and they came out and responded. He also told us yesterday that he was hoping that this team would face some adversity, that they'd struggle, because he wanted to find out who this team is, what the character of this 2021 Bearcat squad is. Well, <laughs> they're facing adversity, yeah. and they're struggling here early in this game. Don't know if he wanted this much adversity, maybe a little, but. <laughs> Down 14 nothing on the road. That's a Campbell can put this through following the penalty. And he splits the uprights. Well, this defense for Charlton Warren has been electric today. Ryder Anderson gets it out. McFadden knocks it loose. And what do you do with the turnover? It's the senior, Michael Penix. On the move, locates his running back. It's all Hoosiers here in Bloomington. Well, here's the touchdown. Boot action, man-to-man -man coverage, and Deshaun Pace 20. He's right where he needs to be. Watch, though, as Michael Penix buys time for his running back, and Stephen Carr shakes loose, continues to work his way into the end zone. Excellent touch pass by Michael Penix. Him buying Stephen Carr time, and Deshaun Pace just loses him. Set up that touchdown. Love the play call by Nick Sheridan, getting his quarterback outside the pocket on the move and capping off that drive. This will be a touchback. Cincinnati will start on the 25. Let's check in with Matt. All right, guys, coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, that classic rivalry between Oklahoma and Nebraska. Oklahoma struggling in the first half. Plus, Virginia Tech is getting absolutely pummeled against West Virginia. We'll have highlights of that. And Miami, they're struggling with Michigan State. ACC, kind of a rough start to start the day. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, joining me coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. Pitt was uh, struggling as well against Western Michigan. Cincinnati hasn't trailed by 14 points in almost two years of game they lost against Memphis. Been a rough start for Desmond Ritter. 7 of 15 and an interception and now another false start. This just doesn't feel like Cincinnati football. Undisciplined. False start. Number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. Handful of false starts, an offensive lineman tries to pick up a fumble with one hand. Catch the next UFC fight night on ESPN Plus tonight from Las Vegas. Michael Smith, Ryan Spann, main event starting at 7 Eastern time. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. So it's first and 15. Five minutes to go in the opening half. The Bearcats run the ball. There's nothing there off that left edge. Cam Jones stuffs Charles McClellan after a one-yard pickup. Cam Jones, the pads are popping. As he is isolated one-on-one, -on -one, it's him and McClellan. I mean, that's a picture-perfect form tackle, bringing his hips. He has been outstanding here in this first half for this Hoosiers defense. Negative 13 rushing yards. Unbelievable job by this front. 
Second down and 14. Ritter will throw it and out of the backfield the ball is caught and the helmet comes off there McClellan as he got hit by Jones he'll have to sit out for a play shout out to the D coordinator Charlton Warren for the game plan first year as the Indiana defensive coordinator was the DB's coach in Georgia the last couple of years but he's called plays before back at his alma mater Air Force. Very impressive when we talked with coach Warren yesterday. He had pretty good feel for this game. And he's called an excellent game so far. They've held Cincinnati one of six on third down. Can Desmond Ritter, a Heisman Dark Horse candidate coming into the year, make a play? Gets hit. The ball flutters and it's incomplete. Backside pressure again by the Hoosiers. Well, this time it's Jaron Handy. You're going to see him working off the edge right here. Now he's working on 72. They're changing up that offensive line. They've gone with James Tunstall. Didn't matter. Great length. The Auburn transfer gets good length and good pressure for this Hoosiers defense. And back to Charlton Warren. I love this story about how he found out about Tom Allen. He said that after the Alabama loss last year at Georgia, that, that Coach Kirby Smart put on a video put on a video and it was showing the passion of Tom Allen. And he said that he didn't know the Tom Allen. on the field on the previous play was an incomplete pass. That play is under further review. Okay, the question is, was there an immediate recovery? We'll take a look, but finish your story about. Well, they put on this video and it was Tom Allen showing his passion, showing his enthusiasm. And that was the first time Charlton Warren had ever been introduced to him. And he said he saw that personality. He saw that passion. And he said, man, that really grabbed me as we take a look at this on the backside. Well, let's see if there's an immediate recovery as well. There, there wasn't. Maybe they're looking at targeting. Oh, right there. Did you see the hit from Micah? McFadden against Desmond yep. Ritter. Yeah, he got sandwiched in there just as the ball was getting delivered. This would be a huge blow to Indiana. I mean, that's forcible contact to the header neck area, but is he blocked into him here? Is he pushed? Really nope. tough to tell from that angle. What a huge blow that would be, Dusty. Oh, there's no question. He means so much to this defense. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what do you see here? Do you believe that this should be targeting on Micah McFadden, McFadden 47 for Indiana? I think it should be. The, he does lower the head. He goes right in head to head contact. I, I do see contact with the blocker, but it looked like he crossed the course. Targeting. There it is. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed. Number 47 is disqualified from the game. Boy. It'll be first and 10 on oh, the 40 yard line. Look, we, we've said it throughout this telecast that he is the heart and soul of that defense and I wonder if Tom Allen is arguing that he got pushed into him but he's done for the day that, that's huge hate that for that young man I, I didn't see any type of malicious intent that is the rule I thought it was well explained by our rules expert well and it's a first down too for Cincinnati it is it, I mean just massive play in this game you take away the heartbeat of this Indiana defense and you give Desmond Ritter and Cincinnati new life. One aspect of that rule that I would love to see address the ejection portion. I'm with you. Yep. I, I just that's too costly of a penalty to eject someone in a situation like that. And Cincinnati comes back with the rushing attack and it's Jerome Ford getting almost nine yards. The man that's replacing Micah McFadden is Tom Allen's son Thomas Allen who had a season ending hip injury last year against Michigan State. So the senior from Tampa going to get more work here playing for his father. There are eight head coaches currently in FBS coaching their sons. We have two of them here today. Tom Allen with his son Thomas Luke Fickle with his son Landon although Landon isn't on the trip a true freshman offensive lineman. Good pickup of eight on first down second and two Cincinnati with two timeouts remaining nearing three minutes to go. Ritter throws complete it's a first down Alec Pierce into Indiana territory. Here's last year Allen with the hip injury and talked a lot about the, the love that Coach Allen has for all his players and especially his son. Need him to make a play here. Cincinnati 
try to steal momentum in this game. And not just here, the rest of this game. I mean, he's going to be a crucial piece of this Indiana defense for the remainder. Ritter, long throw, the receiver stumbled coming out of his break. Jaden Thompson and couldn't catch up to it. Second down. In fact, that pass was on target. Jaden Thompson, turf monster, just got him. Jaden Thompson, a promising sophomore, with the ability to go up and get the football, but couldn't keep his feet there. So explosive, he knocked himself down. It's kind of like you, Tom. <laughs> exactly. Cincinnati in plus territory for the first time at the 46 yard line of Indiana with second and 10. And it's a quarterback run big lane between the tackles Ritter sliding down to the 26 yard line a 20 yard run for Ritter. Well you're going to see Thomas Allen come on a blitz and it's going to open up a massive hole right here. They dial up a blitz. Thomas Allen picks the side of the center, middle of the field is wide open, and Desmond Ritter makes him pay. Got to continue to get Desmond Ritter involved in the run game. Such a key asset of what he brings to the table and makes him so difficult to defend. Don't forget, coming up tonight on ABC, it's a whiteout. In Happy Valley, Penn State ranked 10th in the country, taking on Auburn. Third meeting between these schools in the first since 2003. He touched on this earlier. Can Bo Nix come up big on the road for Auburn against Sean Clifford, the other quarterback in the ball game? Don't you get the sense, Dusty, that that's what that entire game's about? Whatever quarterback makes the fewest mistakes wins. No question. Uh, absolutely. And Sean Clifford, he's got an advantage, right? He doesn't have to go against that hostile crowd. Yeah. It's going to be an awesome scene tonight for Fowler and Herbie. Meanwhile, Cincinnati trying to take advantage of that personal foul targeting that got Micah McFadden, the best player on that Indiana defense, ejected. His replacement, Thomas Allen. Just giving up a 20 yard run on that last play. So first down Ritter with time over the middle and it's caught inside the 10 yard line is the tight end Leonard Taylor. It'll be first and goal for the Bearcats. Well a size discrepancy there Reese Taylor just five foot eleven that's a six foot five target and a good throw on time and in rhythm from Desmond Ritter. Here's Ford. Upended at the four yard line. Pickup of a couple there for the Alabama transfer as we near two minutes to go here in the first half. Just an inside zone. Don't be surprised if you see him come right back with it with the ability of Ritter to keep it, get to the edge, and then that tight end who tried to log the end there, he'll stay as a weapon, go to the flats, and essentially turns it into a triple option. It's Ford again, bounces off of a tackler and drives the feet forward into the end zone. Touchdown, Cincinnati. What a huge momentum shift as the Bearcats cut the lead in half, obviously with the extra point. Well, Josh Wiley's going to come across and he's going to get a nice block in here, but really this is all about Jerome Ford. His physicality as a runner, so tough to tackle. And you see McCray ball try to get him down at the goal line. No chance of that happening as Jerome Ford had a full head of steam. Huge score for this Bearcats team. And again it started with the Micah McFadden personal foul penalty on third down. The defense was off the field. It wasn't just a personal foul it was targeting which means McFadden is ejected. And Cincinnati moves right down the field and scores after that. See him come on a pressure package. Such a good, skilled blitzer. Pressure from the backside. McFadden catches him in the helmet, which initiated, which instituted the targeting. Wasn't called on the field. Replay said it was targeting, and Jerome Ford caps off that second opportunity. The Bearcats' offense had. Prior to that, Dave, 
Ed Bearcat's offense had done nothing, right? And it really, you know, ignited them. That's a huge scoring drive here before half. Well, we said we're going to find out whether Cincinnati really is a top 10 team. We said that about three minutes ago. To bounce back like that, come with a scoring drive, and now Tom Allen trying to get his troops fired back up. But some missed opportunities in the red zone by Indiana. They elected to go for it on a fourth down earlier when they could have had an easy field goal. They didn't get it. Then an interception in the end zone thrown by Penix. Hewitt will let this one bounce out of bounds. Excellent field position for Indiana, and the Hoosiers have two timeouts. Week two, Monday night football, Lambeau Field. What happened to the Packers? Week one, can they bounce back Freaking against the Lions? Bounce. Kicking team, number 91. Monday night countdown starts things at 6 o'clock. First down, Indiana. Kickoff at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Jared Goff traded for Matthew Stafford. Goff had big numbers, but the Lions lost to the 49ers. Rodgers did not have good numbers. You would think based off that first game, there's some type of issue with Aaron Rodgers and his club. Like, maybe he's been away from the team. That was as poor as I've seen Aaron Rodgers play. To Indiana with the ball at its 35-yard line. Plenty of time to get some points going into the locker room. Indiana will get the ball to start the second half. They're going to run Baldwin here. Nowhere to go. Lassoed in the backfield for a loss by Malik Van. Good hands getting off the block of the massive offensive tackle, Caleb Jones. Setting that edge nowhere for Baldwin to go. Second down at 12. In the end, looking like they're just going to run this out, try to get into half with the lead. Cincinnati's offside again, so they got a free play. Penix to the sideline, and a catch is made by Freifogel for a first down that'll stand. And now, if you're Indiana, you want to go a little bit quicker, right? Absolutely. Got that first down. Now you're in the middle of the field, timeouts to work with. No question. Now, foot on the accelerator after the completion. Offside, defense, number 42. That penalty's declined. Result of play, first down. Right, would have been the eighth penalty on Cincinnati. Most of those have been either false starts or offside calls. First catch of the day for Ty Freifold. He's working down there on the Mod Gardner. Told you about that matchup to watch. Freifogel finally gets himself a win and a nice pass from Penix. Clock started on the ready for play. Down to 40 seconds. Penix pump fake. In trouble. Wrapped up. Gets rid of the ball. And it's intercepted in midfield. Second interception of the day. This is Arquan Bush. And Cincinnati with 27 seconds left and a couple of timeouts has the ball in Indiana territory. Well, it's my Jay Sanders. We haven't called his name much today. One of the premier pass rushers in college football. As you'll see him working off the edge here, he's going to be able to get home. And it didn't rattle Michael Penix. He stood strong, but made a mistake trying to make something when nothing was there. Pressure all around him, stands up, just tries to get rid of the football. An extremely athletic play by Arquan Bush. So Cincinnati has time, has momentum. I tell you, Dusty, you just can't throw the no. ball late over the middle. It's one of those where you wish you just took the sack, right? Yeah, just, just eat take it, the sack. Live the play the next down. I, I, maybe you take a shot right here if you're Desmond Ridley. Their kicker, Cole Smith's career long is 50 yards, so you got to get to around the 30 to 35 yard line. Ritter from the pocket throwing it deep and it's caught inside the 20 by Pierce. They're in the red zone in one play and in field goal range. Well that's their vertical threat on cue. Good call by you Tom. 6 3 2 13 puts it up high. Good body control and concentration to go up and pluck that out of the air. Boy since 
the penalty against McFadden. Everything has changed here in this game. You see here Alec Pierce working out of the slot zone coverage. Safety can't get over the top in time. And an excellent throw by Desmond Ritter. And where defensively is the leadership going to come from? From Indiana with McFadden out of the game. I'm sure the teammates shell shocked. Cincinnati, a top 10 team, has just stormed back into this game. And you got plenty of time here, 20 seconds left. You see the kicker, Cole Smith, but there's still plenty of time here with a couple of timeouts, or excuse me, one timeout left for Cincinnati, one timeout to make something happen here and get a touchdown. It's nope. it's where guys like Taiwan Mullen have to step up. Marcelino McCray Ball, veterans who have been on this defense for a while, going to have to step up and fill that void for McFadden, Tom. And they don't have Devon Monster Matthews either in the back end at the safety spot, who would have been the leader of one of those two safety spots. And by the way, since that penalty, Dave, as you mentioned, how hot is Desmond Ritter in the passing game? Yep. See if he can keep it going here. First down at the 18 yard line. Again, one timeout left, 20 seconds to go. Ritter with time as his tight end Wiley dumped at the 14. Luke Fickle will use his final timeout. So how do you handle this here? 13 seconds left. You're out of timeout. So you get one shot to the end zone and kick it? Yes. One shot. Can't take a sack. I think that's what's going to be talked about over on the sidelines. It's a good reminder to Desmond Ritter. OK, no reason to panic. We don't need to do anything too quickly. But you cannot take a sack, and I think you're talking to your wide receivers. If you catch the football inbounds, you've got to get inbounds. I think outbreaking routes or something into the end zone here on this second down. Keep in mind, Indiana gets the ball on offense. Momentum is completely turned, though, in favor of the eighth-ranked Bearcats. They were down 14 nothing, and Indiana had a couple of chances to add more points on. Here they are with a chance now to tie the game going into the locker room. Since that targeting call, Tommy mentioned it, Ritter's been hot. He's four of five for 57 yards. He's been spinning it downfield. This is the go-to guy on deep shots, Alec Pierce. Ritter throws a fade to the end zone. Diving attempt, but it's incomplete. Josh Wiley with Sanguinetti in coverage. Eight seconds to go here in the first half. Sanguinetti, nice job as a safety getting over the top. Goes through his hands. In really good position for the pass breakup. Standing job getting over the top, negating what have likely would have been a touchdown. And Josh Wiley came up limping as well. Their best tight end, he just went to the sideline. And they're going to keep the offense out there. Again, no timeouts left. Eight seconds to go. A lot of cushion from this Indiana defense to keep everything in front. Ritter to the end zone. And it's incomplete. Pierce could not come up with it. Raheem Lane appeared to deflect it. And now Cincinnati will bring on the kicking team. As I mentioned, Indiana's DBs are playing all the way back right there at the goal line. And you see Alec Pierce, he is the target, has an opportunity, and just drops it. Hits him right in the hands, typically a sure-handed receiver. Got to credit Raheem Lane for getting in that passing window. Probably obstructed the vision of Alec Pierce, but as he bangs on the ground, he knows. Opportunity missed. Cole Smith is definitely not automatic. 14 of 26 in his career. It's a 32-yard attempt. This one's money. So Cincinnati scores the last 10 points of the first half. And we got a ball game in Bloomington. 14-10. Indiana in front. And the Hoosiers get the ball in the second half. Now it's Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer in the studio. Guys, thank you. Time now for the Lexus half. A top 10 team in trouble perhaps on the road as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Marathon and the Big Ten on ESPN. Number eight, Cincinnati trailing at halftime at Indiana, but the Bearcats did score the last 10 points. As we take a look at today's more driven moment brought to you by Goodyear. All Michael Penix in Indiana early. That made it 14. That was the early scores up 14-0. And then this, the play of the game to this point. This play brings out the leader of the defense, Micah McFadden, gave this Cincinnati Bearcat offense new life. They cash in for a touchdown. 
a late interception by Michael Penix, trying to do too much, forcing the football. Great play by Arquan Bush, led to a field goal, puts us at 14-10. Micah McFadden, we've said it, the heartbeat of this defense, a different game partner whenever he left the field. And we said at the time, we're going to see if Cincinnati is really a top 10 team. Based on what happens after trailing 14 nothing it was an excellent response they have all the momentum in the world we'll see if Indiana can get it back now for the Hoosiers starting the third quarter on offense sold out crowd at Memorial Stadium first time since 2017 when Michigan was here and it's the largest crowd for a non conference game since the 80s ball has come off the tee a couple times although. There's no wind here. <laughs> it's just hot and humid. Temperature over 100 degrees on the field. Alex Bales will kick it to Jacoby Hewitt. Indiana 1-1 one one on the season. A loss to Iowa Week 1, which knocked them out of the rankings. They were 17th preseason, ranked in the top 20 for the first time since 1969. And Hewitt will run it out here for the Hoosiers, and he's in trouble. Tracked down from behind at the 15-yard line. They patched Dusty Dvorak in the booth. Tom Luganville down on the field. So he talked about Dusty. How everything changed with that targeting call. What also changed was the play of Desmond Ritter. He looked like a different quarterback those last couple of drives. He really did. Made a couple of shots down the field, and then we saw his ability to make plays with his legs. His mobility is a real weapon. I expect we see more of that here in this second half. And back to the Micah McFadden, uh, you know, targeting. Look, I'm not going to argue the targeting. I just hate the fact that he no longer gets to play. It's almost a crime when you go back and look at that play that he's ejected from that. That is the rule. That's the way they call it. I just personally can't stand the fact that a defender doing his job ejected from a game in a magnitude like this. Goes back to should we have a targeting one and a targeting two based on whether one is more severe and deserving of an ejection as Indiana runs it on first down. And Carr is stacked up after a two yard game. Let's check in with Tom. Well, I'll tell you guys, I asked Tom Allen about that play. He said, you know what? We're flushing it. It's gone. We can't worry about it. We can't change it. They can't let momentum carry over into the second half. He said halftime was the best thing to happen to us because it slowed everything down and it put a stop, hopefully, to Cincinnati's momentum. Good start for Cincinnati on the first play as the sun comes back, creeping out from beyond the clouds here in Bloomington, adding to the heat and humidity down on the field. The run car again, and that hole closed quickly because of Darian Beavers. Again, make it a play. The Cincinnati defense has even stepped up since the targeting call in McFadden for Indiana. You referenced it there, partner. Good push on the left side, big gaping hole. We talked about Darian Beavers, his size and ability to make up ground. Nice job closing that gap up and keeping it to a minimal game. That was really the key for Cincinnati in the first half, their ability to establish a line of scrimmage and run the ball. Indiana putting it on third down in the first half. This, I know it's early in the quarter, but feels like a must here to try to get some momentum back. Instead, they got to burn a timeout. There's plenty of time on the play clock, so perhaps a personnel issue there for Indiana. Having to burn a timeout this early in the second half. Our Saturday Night Football game presented by Capital One on ABC and the ESPN app. Auburn on the road against a Big Ten team for the first time in like 100 years, taking on Penn State. Nittany Lions ranked 10th. It'll be a great scene, as we saw on game day with Saquon Barkley as the, uh, the guest picker. And obviously, he went with Penn State. We look at our Wendy's weekend wake up with this matchup. Be a lot of defense tonight, Dave. My kind of football. That Auburn defense so far. Brian Harson's done a nice job. First two games, they haven't played big time opponents, but they've handled them as well they should. It's going to be an awesome scene tonight. Harson coming over from Boise State. Third and six here, empty backfield for Michael Penix, who's already thrown five interceptions on the season, had 11 all of last year. Penix in trouble, throws it deep. And it's incomplete off the hand of Fry Fogel. Indiana wants a penalty on Javon Hicks for interference, but will not get the call. It's a three and out to start the third quarter. Well, that's a mod Gardner look. They wanted the boot. They wanted to hit Matthews in the flat. It's well defended by Van Fossen. 
And you see down the field, Hicks in that throwing window, Freifogel unable to bring that catch in. They wanted to go short, dump it off, is well defended by the Cincinnati secondary. Not the start that Tom Allen was hoping for. James Evans will boot it to Ryan Montgomery. Here come the Cincinnati, and that was well blocked, short punt. Montgomery from the 45 into Indiana territory, inside the 40, and they finally spin him down at the 30-yard line. A 20-yard return after a poor punt. Poor punt. Return team unable to get down the field in time. Nice job in the open field. See the vision, the cutting ability of Montgomery. Prime real estate for the Cincinnati offense. And that momentum that they had going into halftime, feel like it's still rolling here for Cincinnati starting the second half. So after a slow start for Desmond Ritter, completed nine of his last 15, 98 yards. 22-year-old senior quarterback, conference player of the year in 2020, trying to put Cincinnati in front here. Maybe taking a shot off play action. Things are covered downfield, so Ritter takes off. Trying to outrun defenders, and he tiptoes the sideline out at the 24. That's a gain of six on the play for Ritter. He's a strider. Like, he, it's deceptive speed. But that's Thomas Allen, who's got to set that edge and force him back inside to his defensive help. Oh. Nothing down the field for Desmond Ritter. And he's just able to get to the edge and pick up something where there was nothing. You saw a young lady took a shot to the face there. And actually, Desmond Ritter checked on her uh, as soon as he got up. Wow. Hopefully, she's all right. Second down and five, swing pass Ford. And he's got a first down, turning on the burners. Good tackle by Sanguinetti, but it is a first down. And a flag is down at the 23-yard line. Cincinnati had seven penalties in the first half and also one that was declined. Most of those were false starts or offside calls. This is a dumb one, Dave. Personal foul, offense number 11, unnecessary roughness. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, second down. That's Leonard Taylor at tight end. For as well coached as this team is, and Luke Fickle is as good as you'll find in college football, this has been an undisciplined Bearcats team today. Both sides of the ball. We saw it on the interception the first half from Cook when he took his helmet off. And here, negating a first down and everything going Cincinnati's way. We'll take a look up top. It just kills you, Dustin. Leonard Taylor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right here. That's stupid. And there was a confrontation before the game, two hours before kickoff in midfield between both rosters that the coaches had to separate. Ritter, long throw, it's caught at the 30. Pulled in by Michael Young, grad transfer a year ago from Notre Dame, so get a chunk of it back, but it is third down and long. Early second half, but this feels like a major third down for this Indiana defense. Saw a lot of pressure early, but their main blitzer, Micah McFadden, not on the field. Also seen Cam Jones be extremely effective. They've had problems on this left tackle side. John Williams already out. James Tung still in. Take a look here, Jared Handy. Williams was the guy that tried to pick up a fumble with one hand. Back to throw goes Ritter. Pressure at his feet. Backing up. Now taken off. And he just runs out of bounds. Actually lost yardage. Should just thrown it there because. Again, your, your kicker, his career long is 50, and that's going to be what this would be if they try it, because he lost a couple yards there instead of just throwing it away. Great point you make there, Dave. Just toss that ball out of bounds. Good stop by the Indiana defense. Coverage was down the field. Pressure was coming. Desmond Ritter kept his eyes down the field, trying to wait for something to open up. Nothing was there. Steps out of bounds. He's missed almost half of his career attempts, and this is a 50-yarder, which would match a career high. Off the upright, no good. You 
wonder with that hook it at the end if it's two yards closer maybe it's good for three points. Well after great field position from the big punt return that penalty of the tight end Leonard Taylor really comes back to cost the Cincinnati Bearcats a first down in the moment and points off the board. Big game here in Bloomington. What is Ritter? So Cincinnati wastes that excellent punt return because of a personal foul penalty on Leonard Taylor and then Desmond Ritter makes a mistake stepping out of bounds instead of throwing it away it cost him a couple yards and maybe that was the difference on that field goal that hooked at the end and hit the upright. So Indiana gets a little momentum here but the penalty marker is down. Flinch on the right side is what it looked like. False start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. First down. Right guard Matthew Bedford. Our Saturday night football game presented by Capital One on ABC and the ESPN app. A whiteout in Happy Valley. 10th ranked Penn State against Auburn. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. You talked already about the job that Brian Harson has done. Is Penn State back? They had a rough year last year. Certainly find out tonight. Already one big win over Wisconsin to start the season on the road. They get to go home to Happy Valley. So first and 15 for Indiana. Penix hands it off and an excellent tackle by Cook on the running back Stephen Carr for a negative play. Well they're going to bring pressure here and then watch. Sorry they're going to bring Darian Beavers inside and then it's Cook coming downhill from his safety position to replace big time tackle in the hole of Stephen Carr. Number six a football playing dude man all over the place. Luke's had that one handed interception in the end zone of the first half second and 15 play fake Penix gets rid of it deep ball off the fingertips of Fry Fogel incomplete what a throw by Penix that was a 50 60 hard throw right on the money he just couldn't pull it in bodies all around him stood strong in the pocket and delivered a really good throw Fry Fogel been waiting to call his name all day he's only got one catch typically a sure handed receiver missed opportunity there after a good throw from Michael Penix. He has not been good on third down and now you're asking a lot here third and 15. Irvin Poindexter is in the game at running back. We've seen him a bunch here today. Penix from the pocket and he tried to dump it off to Irvin Poindexter but it's incomplete so Indiana will get it right back to Cincinnati. Bearcats defense starting to settle in a little bit. Just a missed opportunity on second down. You've been waiting for an explosive to happen from this Indiana football team. Nick Sheridan told us yesterday they need to create some shots down the field. The opportunity is there. Freifogel unable to complete it. You get in third and 15. That's that's just tough sledding against a defense like Cincinnati. At some point got to help your quarterback out. Struggling with his confidence. Throwing picks. Got to make a play for him as Cincinnati was close. But an excellent punt. Fielded at the 25. And down goes Trey Tucker at the 22 yard line. 48 yard punt, negative four return. Hey, uh, Legends never die. ESPN College Football, presented by Marathon, is brought to you by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Order today for contactless delivery, carryout, or curbside pickup. So employees from Bristol Myers Squibb participating in a coast-to-coast -coast bike ride to raise money for the B Foundation with a goal to surpass $1.5 million. We welcome you back to Blooming Today Pash. Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville, Indiana in front, 14 to 10. Early third quarter. Cincinnati back on offense. The Bearcats rank eighth in the country. They were number seven last week. Dropped the spot after a lackluster first half. They still blew out Murray State 42 to seven. They got Indiana today obviously and then in two weeks they are at Notre Dame. And 
Ritter will just hand it off here. Jerome Ford gang tackled after a short game. So we're talking about the upcoming opponents. If Tulane played well against Oklahoma, could beat Ole Miss, now that'd be another quality win. I mean, what do you think realistically, if somehow Cincinnati wins these games, to get to really grab the attention of the college football playoff committee? It's got to grab their attention. Number eight right now in the AP. This is a legitimate team. We saw them against Georgia in a bowl game last year. Take them to the brink. Got NFL talent on both sides of the ball. The fact that they have to go to Indiana by week then to Notre Dame. The non-conference schedule's there. They got business to handle here before we talk about that. Right. Ritter on second down has a completion of first down Tucker. I and mean, the other thing is you're going to need a ton of help from the teams in the power five, right, to, to lose games. To, and the committee ultimately is going to look at this game and the Notre Dame game. No those, question. Those are the games they're going to focus on. That's exactly right. And, you know, I still don't know if I fully believe that this committee would put in a group of five school, right? I mean, I think Cincinnati would have the resume for it. Would they actually do it? Time will tell. So first down for Cincinnati on its 31 yard line. High snap and Ritter just going to keep it and he's got room past the 40 and Ritter still going finally step out after a broken play Ritter with a huge gain 25 yards. Well watch the block here by Wiley and then watch the block of Jerome Ford to help allow Desmond Ritter to get out in front. Wiley picks up one Ford secures it and then the speed in the open field of Desmond Ritter. But Dusty, the box snap is what set up the timing. That's what opened the hole. Almost great. like a counter, right? Yeah. Half a beat, yep. let the block set up, and then use the speed in the open field. But man, the difference in this Indiana defense without Micah McFadden, very noticeable. All-America linebacker ejected for targeting in the first half, and it's been 10-0 Cincinnati since. Time for Ritter, and it's pulled in inside the 25 by Jaden Thompson. They're on the cusp of the red zone. Reese Taylor made the tackle, lost his helmet. He's got to come out for a play, the starting corner, 21-yard game. Well, this is a zone blitz, and you're going to get Ryder Anderson, a defensive end, back in coverage. And the anticipation from Desmond Ritter as Thompson comes open in that throwing window was outstanding. Maybe the best pass of the day from Desmond Ritter. He's got the hot hand. First down inside the 25. Play fake. Ritter looking. It's tipped and incomplete. Going for Trey Tucker with Raheem Lane bearing down on him. Here's Matt Berry. All right, guys, checking in on Nebraska and Oklahoma. Adrian Martinez here makes it 14 to 10. Huskers staying in it in the third, but this is the extra point. Patrick Fields blocks it right in his hands, receives the blocked kick, and takes it, it back for the two points conversion right now, 16-9 Oklahoma. They're giving the Sooners a game. I, I'm surprised it's that tight. Credit to Scott Frost. His team's ready to play. Play action. Ritter. Leaping catch made by Tucker down to the 16. I mean, we saw Oklahoma struggle week one against Tulane. They were up big at halftime, and then Tulane had a chance to tie the game late. So I wonder what's going on with that Sooner team after Nebraska got beat by Illinois week one, but hanging in there against OU today. Huge third down here, Dave, for Cincinnati. Got to think about Josh Wiley, the tight end. Good pass catching target. I'm allowing Desmond Ritter run pass option here. Utilize that athleticism on the edge. Got to hurry up. The play clock winding down. It's a three. They snap it in time and run four. Trying to get outside. He's going to lose yardage. He stayed in bounds though. Raheem Lane with the hit, then eventually went out. So he loses a couple. Got to kick it, right? Hey, you got to take your points here. I'm a little bit surprised by that play call. I know that they want to establish the line of scrimmage, and Jerome Ford is a powerful, explosive type of runner. I would have thought you would have left that football in a crucial third down there inside the red area in your quarterback's hands. Guys, Ryder Anderson is down for Indiana. That is bad news. Transfer from Ole Miss, who already has a sack forced fumble. We're taking a look at him. Field goal attempt coming. Oh, 
Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention to go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Sellout crowd here in Bloomington on a near 100 degree day on the field. Mid-September in Indiana. 36-yard field goal attempt coming for Cole Smith. He missed a 50-yarder. The last possession made a 32-yarder in the first half. This is hooking, but it's good. There is a penalty flag down. It's fourth and six, so if there's offside, that would make it fourth and one. I don't know if Luke Fickle would take the points off the board here, though. If it be offside, it's coming from the back. If it is, are you taking the points off the board, though? Fourth and one. You're going to go for it on fourth and one at the 13-yard line? I think they're going to call an illegal formation. Okay. On the defense, I guess too many men on the field, perhaps? Was there contact to the snapper? Yeah, I think they lined up over the snapper. Yeah. You have to cheat to one side. Illegal formation defense. He's putting the offense lined up on over the, field. the center. Yeah. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So, what do you guys think of this idea here to take the points off the board and put the offense back on the field? I like it. I'll be honest with you. On the road, down. You're going to give you second live, fourth and one. Not but, surprised at all here by this decision by Luke Fickle. But isn't this the same thing we discussed in the first half when Indiana went for it on fourth and one instead of taking the points? I mean, how many more points are going to be scored? If you don't get it here, you're going to have to score a touchdown at some point to win the game. Where if you take the points here, you only need a field goal, perhaps, to win the game. Their defense, I think this is a trust from Luke Fickle and his defense and the way that they've come out and played here in this second half. Jerome Ford is the running back. They'll put Ritter in the gun here on fourth and one. It'll be Ford and second effort. He got the first down to the 10 yard line. Really good push off the right side. They're going to wash everything, cave everything down. And Jerome Ford hits it downhill, a little spin contorts his body and gets enough to move the chains. They rolled the dice, and it paid off for now for Luke Fickle. So first and goal past the midway point of the third quarter. It was 14-0 Indiana. Cincinnati has scored the last 10 points and just took three off the board to put the offense back on the field. They moved the chains, and now get rid of the chains for first and goal. Ford again finds running room. Good cut, and he's down to the two. Second and goal from there. Sweet feet in the hole by Jerome Ford. You reference the jump cut, and then he lowers his shoulder, gets low, keeps the legs churning, and a nice pick up there on first down. Already has a touchdown, his fifth of the season. Second and goal. Give it to him again, pushing forward. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Cincinnati has the lead for the first time today. Determination from Jerome Ford to get into the end zone. Indiana gives Cincinnati second life with that penalty. Luke Fickle believes in his offense, and it was all Jerome Ford, three straight carries as he stretches the football over the end zone. There wasn't much there, Dave, and he just got low, drove his legs, and scored it through to put his team on top. Smith for the point after. 17 14 17 straight points by Cincinnati coming up tonight on ABC the Saturday night football game presented by Capital One from Happy Valley sold out white out for Penn State rank 10 taking on Auburn 730 Eastern 430 on the West Coast that brings us to today's weekend wake up brought to you by Wendy's breakfast. The SEC 8-1-1 one one against Big Ten teams in regular season matchups when both are ranked. Talked about that a lot today. It's going to be an outstanding game there tonight. Now, one thing you think about all the penalties we've referenced with Cincinnati, 
right? Undisciplined, shooting themselves. Think about the two penalties from Indiana. The McFadden targeting that would have been, was a third down, would have been a punt. That was Cincinnati's first scoring drive. And then there, lining up over the snapper, allowed Luke Fickle to roll the dice, go for it, resulted in another seven points. So two costly, costly mistakes by Indiana helping lead to 14 points from the Bearcats. Last year's Indiana Hoosier football team found a way to win these games. We'll see if this one can. It'll come out to the 25 on the fair catch. Let's go to Matt in the studio. All right, guys, updating you on Michigan State, Miami. Watch this throw here. Peyton Thorne to Jalen Naylor. Also, De'Aaron King has been in and out of the locker room. He's back on the field, but Michigan State has the lead 17 to seven. OU starting to get a little distance. Kennedy Brooks. In 23-9 sooner, so Dusty, you can now pay attention to the game in front of you. <laughs> oh, well played there by Mr. Barry. Dusty watches four games at one time. Two, two, that's like not a big ask. All while being in a three-point stance. No question. <laughs> that's how you gotta do it, right? You got less than four screens going on a Saturday. We just need to bring the long hair back. You got three months. You can have it ready before can bowl season. Some of yours? Yeah, there's not much <laughs> left. <laughs> you gave it all, all the way to charity. Big drive here for Indiana, Michael Penix. Off play action, has a completion. It's DJ Matthews, dropped after a gain of five, trying to get the ball in Matthews' hands, a transfer from Florida State. Can Penix get in a rhythm? Made some good throws, but also a couple of interceptions. One was just a really bad decision, another was a great play, and his arm got hit as well, it appeared. Only nine yards of offense for Indiana so far, 10 minutes into the third quarter. Penix with time, pump fake, taking a shot. Receiver is wide open. It's caught. Matthews out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. Boy, was he open downfield. Boy, it's a double move. Post corner here by DJ Matthews. He sets up the defender extremely well. Arquan Bush working on him. Wow, what a great cut. Got Bush to bite on the post. He hits the corner. Ball may be up in the air just a little bit, but Matthews able to bring it in in a huge big play down the field. Much needed for this Indiana offense. 45 yard gain for DJ Matthews, who opted out last year, did not play. Transfer from Florida State. Where's the number seven to honor his daughter? One year old. Her name is Seven. First down. At the 26, Penix dumps it off. The tight end, Bjorsen, makes a couple of guys miss. Look at the balance down the sideline, or they're going to say he stepped out. He stepped out of the 18. Still, it's a gate of eight. Really like this. Just a little fake the inside zone, split zone. Tight end comes all the way across, acts as if he's going to block, gets out in the flats. I like where that ball was placed by Michael Penix. Outside. Very catchable ball and a nice after the catch by the big tight end Bjorsen. They might look at this. I, I don't know that Bjorsen stepped out. And that play is under further review. Boy, live it looked like Bjorsen may have had his foot. No, no, it is right no, there. There it is. So this shouldn't take long, right? You hope. Especially if you're Indiana, that's why there were some boos. They're starting to move the ball here, and now they gotta step away for a little bit and then you see the hit late there by Brian Cook out of bounds. Yeah, ruling on the field is the, review, out. the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner stepped out at the 18 yard line second down. So it'll be second down and two. Good bounce back drive Indiana in a position here to get something although they've been there have been three times they've been down here and they scored a touchdown just once. The other two times they turned it over on downs and there was an interception by Penix. Got to be smart with the football here for Michael Penix. Three for three on the drive. Got some options here and second down and short. Baldwin has the first down. Wrapped up at the 14 yard line by Mike J. Sanders, but that'll move the chains as we near four to play here in the third. This is what happened in the first quarter. Indiana was able to establish a line of scrimmage, get Michael Penix into a rhythm, and they had a lot of success. Big shot down the field. I like the play call so far on this drive from Nick Sheridan.
Here's Matthews on the end around with running room. Into the end zone for the Indiana touchdown. And an injured Bearcat after Matthews took it to the house on the end around. Sarquan Bush guys looking like he's getting up trying to shake it off. But how about the, the difference that DJ Matthews has made here especially on that drive. He's been pivotal in this ball game. Two different times now they found ways to get him the ball with reverses on the edge. Big plays down the field. We saw the big 46 yarder. Nick Sheridan said DJ Matthews we've got to get involved. He showed last week with the 81 yard punt return against Idaho what he's capable of. It's a guy who was successful at Florida State been a key addition to this team and what a huge afternoon for him here today. He was a player that Indiana looked at out of high school as we talked about in the first half in case you, you weren't with us at that time Tom Allen got a ton of transfers as the extra point is good but all the transfers had prior relationships with someone on the coaching staff they were very selective in trying to get the right people here not to disrupt the chemistry. OK so we're going to get motion here by Pendershot and he's going to come back around and block. They're also going to get Haggard out in front in the left tackle motions comes back across and there's a convoy out there escorting DJ Matthews into the end zone and you see the speed when he's got the ball in his hands as he hits the edge and rolls into the end zone. Excellent answer here by Indiana. That offense had gone to sleep since halftime, and when they needed it the most, they come up with a huge score. And what a great design, Dusty. The design on that play was outstanding. Matthews with a rushing touchdown, Tom, and now six catches, 91 yards as well. Indiana, that, that's. We talked about the Hoosiers of 2020. That drive right there, we saw that from Indiana last year. And after the blowout loss to Iowa, a lot of Hoosier fans wondered, was that just one year? Because you know, two years ago, they had a good season. They were 8 and 5, but last year they were a Big Ten title contender. Are they for real in 2021 despite that loss to Iowa? They end that 17 0 Cincinnati run. And pop it up here to the field of play, and Tucker. Across the 20 yard line big oh. hole Tucker look out. No shot for Indiana to catch him. Trey Tucker all the way. Cincinnati back in front touchdown cats. He got past the 30 yard line and it was all she wrote. 99 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Well as we saw. He Trey Tucker has incredible speed well blocked. He saw a crease put it in fifth gear and there was no chance anybody was going to be able to walk him down felt like Indiana really gained some momentum with that drive and go down and score and that return. Wow what an answer from the Cincinnati Bearcats huge play from Trey Tucker his second career kickoff return for a touchdown. So after nobody did much offensively in the first half as the extra point is wide left hits the outside of the upright so that's a big miss by Cole Smith he missed a short field goal earlier and now misses the extra point but Cincinnati's back in front because of this play well, this is really well blocked up 88 unable to get Tucker on the ground some of the Hoosiers kind of out of their lanes coming down the field and after that one missed tackle a lot of green grass out in front as Tucker just strolls into the end zone and in the second doink of this half off the leg of the Bearcat kicker again that one looked like it hit the outside of the upright that had no shot remember that play boys yep. there have been a lot of these uh, kind of moments in this game where we're like okay write that down yeah right? yeah <laughs> go for it on fourth down take the points off the board uh, on the last drive Cincinnati and instead get a touchdown short missed field goal now a short Extra point pulled left. Indiana knocked off 
at the time it was week one of last year a top 10 Penn State team for its first win against a top 10 team since 1987 can they do it in week three of 2021 Bearcats retaking the lead Hewitt is deep but this one over his head kicked out of the end zone for a touchback extra yard for teachers week is an annual effort led by the college football playoff foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country in games and on social media to learn more about extra yard for teachers follow at CFP extra yard the recipient of our 1000 extra yard for teacher donation is Monique Patrick mother of Indiana defensive back Devon Matthews Monique has taught physical education for 17 years currently at Kip Voice Academy in Jacksonville which is grades kindergarten through fifth and Monique wants a class classroom with an environment where children can learn and build their confidence while learning new sports in games. She wants her students to learn the importance of maintaining an active and healthy lifestyle. Thank you Monique. Her son Devon is hurt but should be back next week starting safety. Here's Carr tripped up on first down hit in the backfield by pace and negative play loss of one. Dusty there's another example of that replace coming down you got the penetration to the left gap then all of a sudden if that safety doesn't make that tackle cars off to the races. You're exactly right Tom like to bring that inside linebacker pressure replace with the safety coming downhill. It's a nice tackle by pace man you better not miss a lot of open grass if you're not able to make that play. Second down and 11 play action pressure coming Penix incomplete. Freifogel looked like he should have caught that and then made contact with Arquan Bush putting his hand on his face mask. Freifogel have a couple drops and then oh the quarterback holding his, his throwing elbow. Not a sign that you want to see from Freifogel that he get hit as you lift my Jay Sanders getting around the edge hits that arm right as Penix delivers. Something to keep an eye on. If you're Indiana I mean now you you already burned a timeout are you taking one here to try to get Jack Tuttle in the game if Penix can't throw you can't turn it over down here be careful if you're Nick Sheridan I think you got to go pretty conservative here not knowing the exact health of your quarterback better snap the ball well they're going to have to call a timeout anyway that's two they've had to burn let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. All right, guys, I'm going to check you out on Miami and Michigan State. Watch this throw here. King to Charleston Rambo. And all of a sudden, Hurricanes back in this 17-14. And what about Oklahoma? Watch this interception by DJ Graham. I'm going to give you a replay on it because it's so good. Spencer Rattler was watching the sidelines with his mouth drops. There you have it. Sooners up 23-9. Man, that from a defensive back making that play. Wow. Some of your athleticism there, Dave. I've seen you make those kind of moves. Fantastic play there. As you look at some of the upcoming games, ending with an excellent nightcap. We were talking earlier about, you know, can a team outside the Power Five even get into the conversation for the college football playoff? BYU, if it can knock off Arizona State, certainly would help their cause, but long way to go to even be talking about that really at this point. Third down and 11 for Indiana. We'll see about the health of Penix here. Holding his throwing elbow after that last play. Going to take a shot here. Flipping it downfield. Wide open. DJ Matthews again downfield. Makes the catch in Cincinnati territory. Big time players make big time plays in big time moments. I love how he moves to his right. Buys some time. And the coverage just lost DJ Matthews. Ball plays perfectly as Matthews catched it and steps out of bounds. Huge. Third and 11 conversion for Michael Penix. Picks up 28 yards. 119 receiving yards for Matthews and a rushing touchdown as well. Back to the ground attack. Stephen Carr able to break a tackle. Getting through that initial arm tackle attempt. Picking up about five yards. The transfer from USC. A little extracurricular activity. This started two hours before kickoff. Arquan Bush has been in the mid middle of a couple of uh, post whistle confrontations. See his teammate Javon Hicks talking to him there. And if you're Luke Fickle, Mike Tressel, I mean, you want your players on edge, but at this moment in the game, you got to be smart. And we've seen them already make some mistakes. You can't take it over the line. Second down and five. Penix going to throw it here. In trouble in the pocket and gets rid of it incomplete. 
got to be grounding, guys. There's nobody, nobody near that football. But the arm was hit, wasn't it? By Darian Beavers. The lead blitz by Darian Beavers. Let's see the t tackle box here. Officials are talking about it. I think he got rid of it before his arm was hit, right? Just yeah. threw it in the dirt. Third down. They're saying, though, that there was pressure and the arm was hit, but I'm not sure that was exactly what happened. It's been the DJ Matthews show here in the second half. I don't see him on the field right now, Dave. Third and five. Penix to the air. Everybody covered. Penix waiting. Now launches it deep. Off the fingertips of Cameron Buckley on what looked again like a great throw. There is a flag downfield, though, and it's going to be on Cincinnati. But Penix has uncorked a couple of deep balls that look to be right on the money. Beautiful pass. They went max protection there, kept the tight end in to give. Holding. Nine defense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Zarquan Bush, ninth penalty on Cincy. Wanted to give Pennix the opportunity to find something down the field as we watch Arquan Bush running with Miles Marshall. His pass just outside the intended target. Hold comes out of your screen. That was right along the sideline where I was standing, guys. And Marshall did a great job. He was the underneath receiver as the quarterback flushed. He's got to go deep. Bush held him. So fresh set of downs at the 32 of Cincinnati. Latter stages of the third quarter with the Bearcats leading by two here on the road. Carr hit at initial contact made by Pace on the handoff. And he was able to score it out of their car, did at least get something out of that, maybe a yard. Or two. It's Bearcats defense so aggressive against the run on first down. The Blanco comes on a pressure and again pace downhill right now as a safety. Contact on Stephen Carr before he can get anything going. Nick Sheridan rotating those running backs. We've seen four different backs. David Ellis, you see him now at the bottom of your screen. He's a former receiver. Out in space here on second down and nine. Panix is looking that way off a of pump fake. Now it goes back to the middle. And boy, threw that one too hard. And then after the play, you see Buckley shove Brian Cook. Third down. Brian Cook's been mixing it up all day. I'm sure he keeps his emotions in check. Again, max protection. Nick Sheridan is seeing something down the field. We know that this Cincinnati front, they can get after the quarterback. But they're starting to take their shots. He had his target down the field, just a misfire there for Michael Penix. Be about a 50 yard field goal try. Charles Campbell certainly has the leg. He's three for three from 50 plus in his career. Third down and nine. That's Ellis in the backfield with Penix, who will throw. He's facing pressure, gets rid of the pass incomplete. Curtis Brooks in the backfield, fourth down. And again, about a 50 yard attempt for Charles Campbell. Well, they feel good about Charles Campbell as a kicker. Second team, all Big Ten a season ago. Two for two on the season. Career long is 53. This will be a 49 yard attempt trying to give Indiana the lead back. Will it stay? It does. It's good. Indiana's back in front. It started to hook, but it hung on. Charles Campbell from 49. Love a kicker at 93. <laughs> Big time kick. He knows where the real football players play on the defensive line. He said, I want to be one of those guys. <laughs> I got a big leg to back up my squad. Huge kick. 
from Charles Campbell. You got D linemen wearing kicker numbers these days, or right. kicker numbers, and kickers wearing defensive lineman numbers. Remember, a missed point after by Cincinnati, so on that last touchdown. Great game. We got Man. still one quarter to go. We're at almost three hours of game time here. There is some cloud cover, but it's been triple digits on the field since well before kickoff today. Shout out to our guy Tom Lugabill down there. Hope you're pumping some fluids, my friend. It is cooking down there on that field. Yeah, this uh, sport turf doesn't really help you much. <laughs> doesn't help with your black pants and <laughs> black boots. <laughs> that too. That's that's the first time we've seen it under 100 on the field today. That's probably only because we've had some cloud cover here for the last half hour or so. So Trey Tucker, who just returned to kick off for a touchdown on his last try, is deep. We'll see if Indiana tries to kick it away from him or just tries to kick it over his head. Smolar is the kickoff guy. And it's a touchback. Let's go to Matt. All right, Dusty, keeping you updated. Oklahoma, Nebraska, they couldn't do anything with Martinez. the interception. Fire. And Nebraska comes right back down and scores. Omar Manning with the catch, 23-16. Nebraska not done yet. Here it's 24-23. Indiana in front. Desmond Ritter, a dark horse Heisman candidate coming into this season, the active FBS leader in win percentage. He's a four-year starter, was lightly recruited. Eastern Kentucky and Cincinnati, the only two schools to seriously consider him coming out of Louisville. They run it off the right side with Ford. He cuts it back, and Ford with an excellent run. A gain of 10, first down. His suddenness, Lukes, is something they haven't had in the backfield of Cincinnati. Look, Jared Doak's a great player. Mike Warren's a good running back. But Jerome Ford's got something a little different. You saw there with the sweet feet, the cut to the right, and the explosiveness after he makes the cut. They've got a good one in the backfield in Jerome Ford. Ryder Anderson back on the field after getting shaken up earlier. It's important to try to rush the passer, but Cincinnati just going to keep it on the ground and nowhere to go for Jerome Ford Camp Jones. And Thomas Allen, the replacement for Micah McFadden, in there on the tackle. And that'll take us to the fourth quarter in Bloomington. Indiana trying to knock off a top 10 team. One point Hoosier lead after three. Sold out crowd at Memorial Stadium on a brutally hot and humid day here in Bloomington. But nobody's leaving this place with Indiana in front trying to knock off number eight Cincinnati 24 23 Desmond Ritter a rough start been much better since the second quarter. And a second and nine for Ritter in the Bearcats offense. Ritter to throw it here as a completion and a first down to Michael Young grad transfer from Notre Dame. That's the next opponent by the way for Cincinnati in two weeks. Heads up play by Desmond Ritter. Pressure off the edge. He replaces the pressure with one of his favorite targets, Michael Young. Young sits down, easy pitch and catch, moving the chains. Well done by the senior quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Ritter became a father in the spring, a baby girl, Layton. Hoping to be an NFL quarterback in 2022. Back to throw here, and Ritter throwing a deep ball for Young. It's overthrown and almost intercepted. Would have been a heck of a play by Reese Taylor to pull that in. He's a former wide receiver. Could not make the play, though. That's a smart play by Michael Young at the end. This ball gets away from Desmond Ritter, floats on him to the right. Watch Michael Young kind of play defense and prevent a spectacular acrobatic play out there on the perimeter by Reese Taylor. Smart by Michael Young. Matt Berry showed you that incredible interception by Oklahoma. Almost had another Odell Beckham type grab with one hand by a defender. So it's second down and 10 at the 47 yard line of Cincinnati. Hoosiers being pressured up the middle. Oh, Ritter is absolutely crushed in a flag down. It was Thomas Allen, and he's going to get called for a penalty. He face planted. 
Desmond Ritter. Remember, he's in there for Micah McFadden, who was ejected for targeting in the first half. Mike McFadden's backup beat gone. Roughing the passer. Defense number 44. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So no targeting, but roughing the passer call. It will put the ball in Hoosier territory. Well, Charlton Warren dials it up. Pressure right up the middle down Main Street. And it, Allen comes clean, unaccosted. Now, is it the steps? Took too many steps, you think? You don't know what I, you don't want to know what I think. What do you think? Tell I, me. I yes, I, mean, I do. I, I you think what I think. I didn't I mean look, I don't think that was rough in the passer. A rules expert could easily step in and tell me I'm wrong, but that looked like bang bang. We'll get Matt Austin in here if we can. Ritter. Deflected and incomplete. Cam Jones broke it up. The tight end, Josh Wiley, the intended receiver. Let's bring Matt Austin in, our rules expert. Matt, did you agree with Dusty that that should not have been uh, roughing the Well, pass? here's here's what I see on the play. Is he the hit? The, excuse me. The timing of the hit was okay, but he took his body and punished the quarterback. He buried him into the ground, put all his weight on him. That's a foul. Okay. So that's what you think it was, driving the quarterback into the ground. So the defender yes. should kind of roll off as he's coming down. Is that is that what Correct. the officials want? Yep. All right, so second and ten, opening minute of the fourth quarter. And Ritter will keep it here. And there's Allen on the tackle at the 30-yard line, but it's an eight-yard gain, third and short. Third and two, maybe four down territory given how erratic Cole Smith has been as a kicker. I would expect something very similar inside zone with Jerome Ford and if the look isn't there if that backside defender crashes just like you saw there Desmond Ritter can keep they can arc release the tight end and Desmond Ritter has options the bread and butter staple of this offense for Mike Denbrock one for ten on third down today for Cincinnati Ford Bounces off tacklers and has the first down at the 27 yard line. Man, he runs hard. Transfer from Alabama, was there for a couple years. Now in his second year with Cincinnati. Had a house call against Georgia in the bowl game last year from 79 yards out. Got a touchdown today. Not afraid to stick his face in there on third and short. I'll tell you, he runs hard, but he's also patient too. He set that thing up. Because if he would have hit it initially, that wasn't the right cut. I just think he's got a great feel for creases in line. From the 27 of Indiana, Cincinnati looking to regain the advantage here. Ritter, and it's caught by Young trying to fight off the defender, Sanguinetti. And it's a gain of nine on the play. Strong throw there by Desmond Ritter. Pressure again in the face. Defensive coordinator Charlton Ward continues to dial it up. One on one coverage to the outside. Ball placed very well by Desmond Ritter. Long throw to the near sidelines. Ritter had some accuracy issues in the first quarter, but has cleaned that up. Second and two. Ritter going to throw it again here. Throws a fade into the end zone. Alec Pierce did he hang on no signal yet he did touchdown Cincinnati's back in front well sometimes size matters and a six foot three Alec Pierce working on a five foot ten Taewon Mullen nice job putting the ball up there with plenty of air to allow Alec Pierce to go up and get it. Ball placed perfectly over the head of the defender. That's just saying, I trust my guy. A lot of trust there between Alec Pierce and the quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Well thrown ball and a nice job with strong hands to bring that pass in. And Cincinnati's going for two, but the play clock is winding down here. Are they going to reset it? Or is this going to, yep, they did just reset the play clock. The Bearcats trying to make it a seven point game. Penalty marker down. Movement again by Cincinnati. False start. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty. Replay the try. That's the fifth 
false start by Cincinnati and now Luke Fickle says we're going for one. You know Dusty you're talking about that mismatch on that touchdown and throwing it up and giving your guy a chance on the 50 50 ball as good of a player as Taiwan Mullen is it's so hard to play with five ten yeah. corners in today's game it's just a mismatch in the red zone. Cole Smith missed an extra point earlier. Trying to make it a six point lead. That one is good. So it's 30 to 24 Cincinnati. Football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A. Alabama and Florida coming up next. On ESPN tonight, you got Georgia, South Carolina, Oklahoma up seven right now. And m bouncing back. Penn State, Auburn, our ABC prime game tonight. What do you think about that Alabama Florida game? Any shot the Gators can pull the upset? I don't think they can score with them. An Alabama offense too lethal. Which quarterback are we going to see? Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson. That's a stout tie defense. It'll be a touchback here for Indiana. Let's go to Matt Berry while we have a moment. Yeah, guys, I'm going to update you now on Western Michigan and Pitt. Look, Darius Jefferson here. Drew Beatty gets it in. 41-34 Western Michigan. Now Miami, Michigan State. Peyton Thorne, after the De'Ara King fumble, is going to find Jaden Reed, who's having a big day. Sparty's defense good. The offense executing even better. 24-14 right now, Sparty, in the fourth quarter. Well, they had quarterback troubles, Matt, last year and had a rough year in Mel Tucker's first season, but maybe the Spartans are for real in the Big Ten. Indiana trying to come back now, trailing by five, early fourth quarter. They're going to run it here, and Baldwin is tripped up by Curtis Brooks. They had 76 rushing yards, Indiana, in the first quarter. Right around 30 rushing yards since, and that's one of the reasons why they're trailing this game right now. Early on, Indiana just completely was owning the line of scrimmage. This Bearcat defense has really settled in. And here in the second half, Curtis Brooks made several nice plays in that front line of run defense. Only 28 rushing yards in the second half, and only a handful of rushing yards in the second quarter. Penix. Through the hands of his receiver. That's five Fogle. You can make the case that's three drops by Indiana's normally sure handed wideout. To see him go out there with some strong hands. Try to pull that catch into his body. And Dusty, he's cradle catching the yeah, football. You can't do that. You gotta extend and pluck, and he's just had an off day, and you can tell by his body language as well. He had Kobe Bryant on him. Darian Beavers, we've seen him down a couple times for Cincinnati. Freifogel has been targeted six times and he only has one catch. It kind of goes back to what we said earlier also about helping your quarterback who's made some mistakes. I mean one of those pick sixes that Penix had in game one was off the hands of a receiver. Stumbling out of a route falling down pass off of him just unopportune. You're exactly right Dave and here today there's been a couple of different instances where his receivers could really help them out. And now it's third and nine as you look at some of the other games on the ESPN networks. And Florida State bounce back after that brutal loss to Jacksonville State in the final play. Clemson already a loss on the season. Can't afford another one that's going to get back to the college football playoff. Intrigued to see what DJ Uyunglele does today. Had a slow start to the season. We, we figure with the Georgia defense that would happen. But and again last week against South Carolina State. Big Saturday for the Clemson quarterback. Third down and nine for Indiana. See if Cincinnati comes after Penix. They rush four. Penix from the pocket steps up on the run. Going to keep it here at the 30 and tackled short of the line to gain by about a half a yard. Almost got the first down. Fourth and one. You're down six. Any chance you go for it here? I don't think so on your side of the field. I don't think you want to give. You're already down six. Cincinnati would be in field goal range. And Tom Allen says, I'm not listening to you up in the booth. I'm going for it. Surprise, a little bit surprised by this call with 11.30 to play in the fourth quarter. 
Yes. Only yeah. have that one timeout though. I wonder if that's a factor also. Don't know how many more opportunities you're going to get. So they'll go for it. Remember they went for it on fourth down deep in Cincinnati territory in the first half and didn't get it. Panix throws it here and it's caught for a first down by Hendershot. Excellent call by Nick Sheridan the offensive coordinator there Cincinnati did not see that coming. Well he is called an absolute gem here today. We're going to get 89 out in front and we're going to have Hendershot come outside. Little play action move the pocket easy toss dump down to the tight end. Great play call and excellent execution on a crucial fourth down conversion. Second year as the offensive coordinator at Indiana former Michigan quarterback. Said he knows this defense well as Cincinnati saw it all those years at Michigan State and Ohio State when he was playing for the Wolverines. Here's Baldwin. A helmet goes soaring. On a defensive player. Gain of about three or four. Marcus Brown lost his helmet. He'll have to go up for one play. So a four yard gain. Indiana will take that. Most of the run plays have been going for negative zero or one. So four on first down to give them some options here. One of the biggest games in a long time at Memorial Stadium the fans can actually see. Penix with a pump fake gets hit and the pass is incomplete. Malik Van was in the face of the quarterback and it's third down. That's good coverage down the field. I mean Michael Penix waited as long as he could. He pump faked and waited trying to have somebody come open. Nobody comes open down the field and Van gets there right as he tries to deliver the pass. Making it difficult on Michael Penix. Good coverage everywhere. Nowhere to go with the football. Third down and six. See if they heat him up here. Mike Tressel has kind of laid off a couple times on third down lately. Trying to bring some pressure and heat up Michael Penix. Only two for eight throwing on third down. They're going to run it here and it's a first down. Urban Poindexter is loose in the secondary. All the way to the 20 yard line. So on third and six, they get a 37 yard rush from Davion Urban Poindexter, the four string tailback. And then once again, it's pressure inside. Van Fossen gets out of his gap. Big hole off the right side. That's anticipation from the offensive coordinator, Nick Sheridan, to get that inside pressure. And they hit it off the B gap for a huge gain on third down. So a big fourth down conversion. Now a third down and six conversion, and they're on the red zone. Trailing by six, inside 10 minutes to go. Baldwin on the cutback and driven to the ground by Beavers who's back in the game another vicious tackle by Darian Beavers no gain of the play goes back to what we talked about earlier Tom when you blitz those linebackers yep. you leave yourself susceptible for a run popping it's been a while but finally Indiana able to break one loose at a perfect moment I was just going to point that out and follow you up is you had the inside penetration of the a gap between the center and guard but you didn't have the replaced tackler coming down to the B gap and they exploited it. Second and ten for Indiana. Penix dumps it off. Hendershot breaks a tackle. He's inside the ten and knocked out of bounds at the four yard line. Boy, Peyton Hendershot, third team All Big Ten tight end last year, already has a touchdown, makes a big play here. He's been fantastic, and here it is again. Play action, move the pocket, strong hands by Hendershot, and then you see him fight through the tacklers, get to the sidelines. Man, he's had a heck of a day. First and goal. Baldwin trying to find a hole and dives to the four as Beavers had a hold of his ankles. So a gain of one. It'll be second and goal. Penalty marker is down in the end zone. Illegal substitution. Defense. 12 men in formation. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Something again we don't see from a Luke Fickle coach team. Cincinnati has been very undisciplined today. Throughout the course of this entire game, we saw it initially early with several false starts. Crucial moments throughout this game. Cincinnati continues to shoot themselves in the foot. Tenth penalty of the day for the Bearcats. And first and goal on the two. It's Baldwin going nowhere. Beavers with a tackle for a loss. The ball came out. 
They have not signaled yet. The officials are having a discussion. The ball ended up in the hands of a Cincinnati defender. Darian Beavers who made the hit. For me the call on the field in this situation is so important. Because then replay has to have. Evidence beyond all doubt to overturn what the officials on the field call. Let's see. It's an excellent tackle by Darian Beavers. He comes in. And it's tough to see where exactly that ball came out. And that's the problem, right? Because if you, you rule it a fumble on the field, it's probably going to stand because you can't see the ball. That ball's out. Yeah, it looked that like ball's it was out, out right away. Sure. 100%. Yeah, right away. Beavers to, stripped it. It's an outstanding job. He puts his helmet around the football. Talk about a form tackle. He's coming down, fills that gap, hat on the ball. The ruling on the field was that the runner was down. Well, that's going to get overturned. The reason that's going to yeah. get overturned is because he can see the ball. Absolutely, especially that last shot. We were able to show this is just a quality job by Darian Beavers comes in. The ruling on the field on the previous play was that the runner was down. That play is under further review. Got to make sure too that uh, Cincinnati had a clear recovery. They're reviewing this. We'll step aside. The ruling in the field has been overturned. Darian Beavers forces the fumble, recovers it, and Indiana again turns it over inside the 10. Didn't take them long in the break to get to this call. I mean, this is just an outstanding individual effort by Darian Beavers. Downhill right now as he contacts Baldwin. Helmet on the football, you see balls out. Legs are still not on the ground, and then it's Beavers who scoops it in with his left hand. Big time play by the senior linebacker. So a turnover on downs at the Cincinnati 11. Penix from the eight yard line throws an interception, and now the fumble on first and goal from the two. Cincinnati takes over on its four yard line, leading by six. Remember, Indiana has just one timeout left. Third turnover of the day by the Hoosiers. Run play Ford and he powers his way out past the 10 yard line out to the 12. Well, that's big coming off the takeaway to get eight yards on first down. Keeps those legs moving all the time. So powerful tough to tackle and when he gets into a scrum that scrum usually moves forward. Great leg drive on first down from Jerome Ford. Cincinnati milking some clock here. Second down at two. Ritter going to keep it here. And he's able to get the first down as we go to Matt Perry. For the start of Florida State, McKenzie, Milton, and Wake Forest. We're going to start that game over on ESPNU. We will move Florida State, Wake Forest back here at the conclusion of the Cincinnati, Indiana games. So if you're looking for Florida State, Wake Forest, it will kick over on ESPNU. All right, thank you, Matt. 738 and counting to go here. First down run by Desmond Ritter. Bearcats trying to stay unbeaten. Their next game is in South Bend in two weeks. Trying to knock off a very good Indiana team on the road. They keep it on the ground with Ford. Stacked up after a short gain. Cam Jones and Demarcus Elliott team up on the stop. You'd expect a heavy dose of Jerome Ford trying to ice this game away coming out of their own end zone. Seen this Indiana defense step up throughout the course of this afternoon. Imperative they get the ball back for their offense here. Ford to the sideline. McClellan is in. Cincinnati has had two power five wins under Luke Fickle in the regular season, both against UCLA. And they also have two bowl wins against power five teams. They run McClellan's got a hole. Brought down short of the line to gain by about two yards. So a huge third down here for Indiana if it wants to get the ball back with any time on the clock. Jerome Ford came off before that last play. You would think on third and short, you'd like him in the ball game. Looks like they're going to go with McClellan. I mentioned this earlier. Inside zone, it's a bread and butter of what they do. And with that, Desmond can keep it. He can give it. 
He's got 11. Leonard Taylor might be on the outside as a, as a lead blocker. Play clock is down to four. McClellan gets the first down. Clock will stop to reset the chains, but boy, that, that's big for Cincinnati. Again, just that one time out for the Hoosiers. They had to burn one in the first minute of the third quarter and then used one earlier on a fourth down play. Or actually on a play that was third down where Penix was hurt. Credit this offensive line too, though, guys. This was an offensive line that got pushed around for a good portion of the first half into the second half. They've kind of been the difference here. They've been they've been getting some movement and allowing this clock to drain. From the 28-yard line, Ritter throws dangerous pass, incomplete, intended for Jaden Thompson, Jalen Williams. Excellent cover corner. In coverage, you surprised they threw it there? A little bit stopped the clock, especially as Tom had just referenced. This offensive line starting to play their best brand of football throughout the course of the day. Thought they would have kept it on the ground as Jerome Ford came back in. Great to see Jalen Williams back on the field. Wasn't with back for Indiana today. As you mentioned, really good cover corner. And at this point, if you're Luke Fickle, you just want to see that clock tick down. Without second and ten. See if they throw it again here. And will Indiana bring pressure? Bearcats will just run it, and there is nowhere to go. Bring it up third down and 10. Let's get to Matt very quickly here. All right, guys, you won't believe how West Virginia, Virginia Tech ended. Virginia Tech got a turnover right, late, had first and goal, goal to go. This fourth and goal, the pass incomplete. West Virginia hangs on 27-21. So a top 15 team goes down in Tech. Will Cincinnati suffer the same fate? The Bearcats lead by six. It is third and ten from their 28-yard line. Alec Pierce down here. He's got the size mismatch. Ritter with time. Throws. Incomplete. Behind the intended receiver, Pierce. So the clock has stopped. Indiana will get the ball back with 4.35 to go. Quality coverage there by Reese Taylor. He's given up three, four inches, and he's right there with the receiver the whole time. Maybe a little grab there as he's trying to get out of his break. No call. And Indiana with a huge stop to get their offense the ball back. A little surprised that there was no call I know, there. That, that more than hand, he, it was a pretty good tug. Yeah, more than just incidental contact. Had a hold of him for a couple of seconds there. The dangerous D.J. Matthews is deep. He's made some huge plays so far in this game for Indiana. Will he get a chance here with Mason Fletcher, the true freshman punter? Won't get a shot. Well done. Fair caught. Indiana possession. Down six, trying to pull an upset here in Bloomington. Back in a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon, driven forward. The Power Five wins under Luke Fickle, two coming in bowl games, and now trying to take down Indiana in Bloomington. Cincinnati came into today, not much of a chance to make the college football playoff. It'll increase a little bit if they win. They also obviously have to beat Notre Dame and then run the table to have any sort of chance whatsoever, and they may not even be realistic. Indiana. With an opportunity here with Michael Penix leading the way. Will throw it here in first down, facing some pressure, stepping up and sack back at the 30 yard line. It's Darian Beavers again. This guy is all over the field for the Bearcats. Well, they're going to bring just about everybody here. De DeBlanco right here in and off the edge. It's Beavers that gets home. Mike Tressel staying aggressive. The outside pressure forces Penix up in the pocket, and it's Beavers that finishes him off. Relentless pressure for Mike Tressel late in this ballgame. One timeout left for Indiana had burned two inside four minutes to go. Penix has been a hero before. Can he do it again for the Hoosiers throwing on second and 16 looking deep got single coverage jump ball incomplete. He went for Swinton and the All-America corner Sauce Gardner in coverage there. This is so well played by Ahmad Gardner outside working on Swinton. Kind of bites early, recovers, and extremely well done getting that left hand in and getting the pass breakup. One of the absolute best cover men in all of college football, Ahmad Gardner with a big play. 
So third down and 16. Four down territory, given that you only have the one timeout. So you don't need all of it, right? You just need a chunk to get yourself in fourth and manageable. Cincinnati came after Penix on first down, didn't on second down. They'll rush four here. Penix in trouble, gets out of there, looking downfield, flips it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pace, taking it back inside the 20, inside the 10. And he stepped out of bounds inside the 10, but it's Bearcat ball. Well, it's going to start with the pressure from my Jay Sanders coming off the edge. He's going to come right around your screen. And he's going to force Michael Penix to roll to his left. And then Michael Penix makes the cardinal sin of quarterbacking late across his body and back to the middle. And it's Pace with a huge interception to potentially seal this game. Definitely steps out of bounds. And again, just one timeout left for Indiana. Third interception of the day thrown by Penix. Played three games. He's had two games in which he's thrown three picks. Definitely trying to force that one there on third down and 16. Cincinnati can put it away here with a score. They were down 14 nothing. The Bearcats showing a ton of resolve here on the road. Ford thrown down. Weston Kramer. Indiana has just that one timeout remaining. Luke Fickle told us he said he wanted this team to face adversity. He wanted them to struggle. We asked him, what's the identity of this team? What do you say to us? I don't know. I don't yeah. know yet. This I... game's going to tell me a lot. And well, he's learned a lot about the resiliency of this football team. As you mentioned, down 14-0, they didn't blink, kept swinging, and it put themselves in prime position to go on the road and get a quality win. Keep it on the ground here, you would assume, on second down and goal. Got a couple of tight ends in. It's Ford again, and there's no hole. Wrapped up. Alfred Bryant, third and goal. No, Dusty, I think Cincinnati's the better team here, but didn't necessarily play that way all day long. And so when you find a way to make a, a, a play, you find a way to win, it kind of defines who you are. Big third down coming up. Indiana's out of timeouts. Bear in our college football studios. If you're looking for Wake Forest, Florida State, that has kicked over on ESPNU and you missed Sam Hartman to A.T. Perry. How about this? Wake Forest scores early 7-0. That's over on ESPNU. We'll move it over here to ESPN at the conclusion of Cincinnati, Indiana. And right now, the Bearcats Third and goal from the seven yard line. That's Cole Smith. Missed an extra point earlier. Missed a field goal as well. See with Indiana out of timeouts if the Bearcats just run the ball here. Got to take the clock down to about two minutes before bringing on Smith. It would surprise me if this is anything but a run. Jerome Ford, your quarterback. Keep that clock churning. And they will. No, Ritter going to keep it, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Had a choice there whether to throw it, but the veteran kept it and hit Pater. Cincinnati's going to walk out of Bloomington with a win. One more look to make sure Desmond Ritter got in. Initially, it sure seemed that he did. Definitely in the end zone, as you see Desmond Ritter shake the tackle of Thomas Allen, who's in for Micah McFadden. Big time play by Desmond Ritter. Talked about that competitive toughness from the onset. Got a glimpse of that right there on a crucial play from Desmond Ritter. They're going to go for two to try to make it a 14 point game. Again, Indiana out of timeouts, 2.37 to go. Obviously, the Hoosier, the Hoosiers that have to score. Quick, get an onside kick recovery and then score again. They might. Their first. So it'll be a 30 second timeout. Cincinnati to talk this over. All right, so let's take a look at it here. 
Okay, we're going to have motion come across by Wiley. He's going to be the outlet outside, inside zone, and he's going to keep it, and he's going to get out to the perimeter. Essentially, a triple option. Backside defender caves. It's a keep. I'm sure it was said in the timeout. The only way you throw this ball is if nobody stays with Josh Wiley. It was covered. And Desmond Ritter puts his foot in the ground, gets north and south, and finds the end zone. Smart play. And as I've said all day, that's the bread and butter. And in a big moment when you need a play to ice a game away, offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock ran exactly what they run as good as anything in this offense. Inside, read zone with the ability to pitch it out to your tight end. And at the end of the day, Desmond Ritter gets it done with his legs in the clutch. Going for two. Ritter. And it is caught by Leonard Taylor in the end zone to make it 38 24. It started with the interception by Penix on third down and 16, trying to force it back across the middle. It was picked off by Deshaun Pace, and then Ritter with the touchdown. Ooh, the ball almost came out there. McCrary ball nearly stripped it. And then Ritter with the two-point conversion, a little behind Taylor, but he made the catch. So Indiana with three missed opportunities, Dusty, inside the 15-yard line, three times coming away with no points. So if you're a college football fan, what do you think of Cincinnati right now? Are you a believer that they're really a top-10 team after watching this today? Well, they came on the road. They found a way to win. They did not play their best game today. Find themselves in a hole, 14-0. You fight back. You keep swinging. And they're going to walk away with a staple victory on this resume. I think they're a top-10 team. Are they college football playoff worthy? We're going to need to see them continue to improve throughout the course of the season before I can get there. But you've got to appreciate the resiliency, the guts that this Cincinnati team showed. Look, they were shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, they were, they were getting penalty after penalty, making mistakes, yet they found a way to win on the road in a hostile environment. Great crowd here in Bloomington and a good Tom Allen led football team. It's a quality win today for Cincinnati. Here's David Ellis for Indiana. Trying to get the corner, and he can't. Good job on special teams there by Cincinnati. So the Bearcats will have a bye and then be at Notre Dame. And you know, obviously, they have to win that, probably win it convincingly, and then run the table. I mean, you're asking a ton uh, for Cincinnati to even get into the conversation for the college football playoff. The bottom line is Cincinnati's a really good team. Yes. If they're a really good team, and Luke Fickle, a guy that had an opportunity in 2011, was thrust into a very difficult situation at Ohio State, where he played, where he had coached. Jim Tressel, that goes down. All of a sudden, Luke Fickle's the interim coach. It, it doesn't end well for Ohio State that year. He stays with the Buckeyes under Urban Meyer, gets another chance to be a head coach. And he told us yesterday he's a different coach because of that experience in 2011. Penix has a completion. And Hendershot able to break a tackle. And out of bounds. <laughs> Hendershot's had a heck of a game today. Really good after the catch. And you're exactly right. I mean, Luke Fickle talked about that experience in 2011. I think he believe he told us of all the things he's ever learned, that might have been the biggest teaching moment for him personally on what to do differently as a coach if he got the next opportunity. And man, he's hit it out of the park in his fifth season here at Cincinnati, taking this program to a completely another level. Penix overthrows Fry Fogel. Let's talk Indiana for a second. If you're Tom Allen, this young man, Michael Penix, had so much magic a year ago, clearly struggling today. You know, Jack Tuttle won a game for him last year at Wisconsin. Are you starting to think about a change, or are you sticking with Penix? as you get inch closer to, to more games and conference action. Well, based off the conversations we had with Tom Allen and Nick Sheridan, it seems like they believe and trust in their guy. But at some point, you've got to quit throwing the football to the other team. I'm sure there will be some serious internal conversations on what they might do at quarterback. Another overthrow. Now, Penix also did have a lot of help. Brian Fogel had three drops. So certainly not all on him. I'll say one thing, though, guys. 
the one area he was different today than he was the previous two weeks is he had more confidence and he turned it loose. The previous two weeks, very hesitant, indecisive. You could just tell there wasn't comfort, there wasn't confidence. He made some mistakes today, but his demeanor was different in doing it. Totally agree with that. And I, I thought, you know, that Iowa game, he became gun shy the second week against Idaho. Yep. He shook that off here today. Nice throw there. Juggle and broken up, incomplete. Going for Bjorison. So fourth down. Indiana has to. Uh, they play at Western Kentucky, then at Penn State. They play Ohio State, Michigan State at home. They go to Michigan. They beat the Wolverines last year for the first time since 1987. Ranked 17th in the preseason. First time since 1969, but they're going to be one and two after three weeks. Fourth down and ten. And another overthrow. Cincinnati will take over on downs and will take a few knees and get out of here with a 38 24 win. Back to Tom Allen a little bit. I'll tell you, he's built something here at Indiana. I mean, I know that the one and two start is not. What he expected heading into the season was so much momentum from a season ago. But you got to appreciate Leo, it's very real. They love each other. He's built a program. There is a bedrock foundation here with this Indiana football program that hasn't existed in quite some time. People shouldn't give up on this Indiana football team just yet. They've taken their lumps here early against a good Iowa team and a good Cincinnati team. But I'd be surprised if we don't see some kind of response from a Tom Allen led team. And just look at the crowd, guys. I mean, people care yeah. about Indiana football. Yeah, it, it's been a while since they've had this kind of buzz going into a game. And obviously, last year they had big wins, but there was not a crowd to enjoy those wins. So, as a couple of the players told us yesterday, look, it, it's not just a basketball school anymore. And I agree with you. I, I think Indiana football is here to stay in terms of being a competitive team yep. and winning some games. This is a really good Cincinnati team's got a lot of veteran players. I think the question you got to ask yourself about Cincinnati in relationship to the schedule and are they a college football playoff caliber team is could they do this versus an Indiana or better every week in these types of environments every week. That's the question you have to ask yourself. And I don't know that we're ever going to find that out because even when they get in the Big 12 Texas and Oklahoma aren't there. Right. It's exactly right. It's it's the exact point. But I think that committee will be pressed with Tom right I mean right. that's the conversations they'll have. I just know this if that's the case if we're going to say well what would they do if they're in another league then to me that needs to be said beforehand you know you need to essentially say well since you play in this league and there's not enough quality competition you have no shot of making it if this team is able to win at Notre Dame run through that American schedule win a second straight American conference. They, they deserve at least a shot or else they need to change the way they go about putting together the college football playoff. Really good win for Cincinnati on the road overcoming a 14 nothing deficit and they struggled offensively for most of that first half but end up putting up 38 points on the road. Darian Beavers made the play of the game forcing a fumble as Indiana was going in to take the lead with a touchdown and an extra point. He forces a fumble and recovers it on first down and goal from the two. That's what has been the bedrock of Cincinnati under Luke Fickle takeaways and they got a big one late to get a win 38 24 on the road for Dusty Dvorak Tom Luganville Matt Austin our rules expert our entire crew as well Dave Pash saying so long from Bloomington time for Florida State and Wake.